All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of State of the Hope Everybody's having a great day today. Um, so today we're going to be starting our Drucker County playthrough. A lot of you guys voted for this at one over Cascade, which is fine because we actually just did a playthrough on Cascade uh, with the old corner office and everything not too long ago. So it'll be nice to jump into a new map. Uh, plus, I feel like I haven't played Drucker in a while, a while. And it's one of the more underplayed maps uh, a lot of people don't like this map so that's why i'm uh gonna be interesting to see if maybe some of the bases are a little bit stronger with the outpost placement and things like that so i hope everybody's having a great day thank you so much for coming and hanging out let's uh let's get this fired up so um one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to be bringing in some uh, legacy survivors. Uh, I made sure they were all empty, but um, I don't want to spend more. I don't have very many points to get another red talent, so I'm going to be bringing one of them in. Um, let me see. So, the, like I said, on this playthrough, I want to go Nightmare Lethal Lethal uh, just to kind of see how it feels. <clears throat> and uh, because, I honestly... When it comes to set difficulty settings, if you're a Nightmare Zone player, like if you can handle the Nightmare Zone, then you should be able to handle this. Because all this does is makes things a little bit more expensive and make less loot, but you're still pretty much playing on Nightmare Zone. So um, we'll go Nightmare Lethal Lethal. And then we're going to go to Drucker County. Uh, we'll be playing Ark, I believe, tomorrow. All right, obviously, we'll, we're going to do no boons. And then, let's see here. So, who do I want to bring in? I was going to bring a couple people from my last uh, community. Now, that one has stuff on her. I had another hygienist. Community skills... Quirk. Okay, so she's empty. Yeah, Elizabeth here will be whoop, will be recruited. Um, and as you guys can see, I made sure she didn't have anything on her to like off, you know, make the balance of the start at weird or anything like that. Um, we're also gonna go with our red talon. Um, yeah, we'll take our gut packing red talent here. And as you guys can see, he also has a nope, this isn't the one then. I was say the one I had was uh, was empty. All right, one, two, three. Where the hell is he? I, I, honestly. I don't even know, because uh, I think that because I'm playing on uh, night Lethal Zone Community, my people are still going to be eating, like, two food a day. Maybe that was the game. Maybe I just forgot to take the, uh, yeah, I think I just forgot to take the handgun off him. It's all right. I'll just drop it on the ground. Get a mechanic? Fuck no. I don't start with a mechanic chat in all my thousands of hours. Only noobs start with mechanics. <laughs> um But uh yeah, the uh Now I lost my train of thought, chat. But I'm not playing on Nightmare Community, so I still have to worry about food because it's going to be, it's going to be lethal zone levels of, uh, of, of resources. Now, but one thing I probably could cut down on is this hygienist. Uh, realistically, I don't need this hygiene expert. Now that I'm thinking about it, because we are technically playing on our nightmare zone, and the, uh, yeah, we probably don't need that skill actually. So I can probably actually get rid of this hygiene. Hmm. 
Uh, but one of the things about Drucker County chat is um, Drucker actually has a library. All these people have stuff on them. So I wouldn't mind rolling with her. Oh, that, yeah, I, I don't. I, Chad, when's the last time you ever seen me start with a damn mechanic? Come on. Come on, chat. When's the last time you seen me start with a mechanic? Like, you guys are disrespectful. You're disrespecting me right now. I haven't blown up that many cars. <laughs> I, I got people in. Guys, the ch chat's telling me how to play State of Decay. What is going on? What's going on today? We're not playing Ark, chat. We're, we're not playing Ark. That's what we're trying to tell me how to play the game. Like, I ain't never played the game before. Nah, it's all good, chat. I'm just messing. <laughs> I'm just messing. But um, I really haven't. I, I really haven't blown up a car in like forever. Aaron, listen, brother. What the twenty gifted, brother? She did not. <laughs> what are you, are you trying to bribe me? <laughs> You're trying to bribe me into getting a mechanic? Holy shit, dude! With the twenty gifted members, I, I man, that is too much, bro. Seriously, that's way too much, man. I, I mean, there might be some evidence of me blowing up a car, but not recent evidence. Holy shit, Aaron. That is huge, bro. Seriously, thank you so much, man. That really means a lot, dude. I mean, oh, let me see. Oh, hold on. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying right now, right? Cause I, I got a relatively decent mechanic here, right? But I'm in my brain. All right, I'm sitting here trying, and and she doesn't have a bunch of loot on her, which is cool. You know what I mean? Fresh start. You know, I, I don't. It won't break the balance. But what I do, so I, I see this fifth skill here, and I'm like, what am I gonna do with this mechanic in the beginning of the game? Like, what purpose is this mechanic gonna serve me? That, that's the kind of stuff I'm sitting here thinking of. And the only thing I, I would even remotely benefit from this mechanic early game would be being able to craft repair kits. But there's going to be plenty of repair kits to loot on the map. So in, in essence, I'm going to have a dead fifth skill. Because I'm not going to have the parts to even really facilitate making multiple repair kits. So that's the kind of thing my brain goes through. Now, once you get that like mid-game, mechanics are pretty useful. Once you can actually sustain crafting repair kits. But realistically, what the hell am I going to do with a mechanic in the beginning of the game? Now, now next crow speak in my language. See, right there. I, 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 we can get some chemistry. But oh, Let me see. Let me see. Do I got a good chemist? Chemistry, chemistry. Um, so I got a lot. Ooh, why is Shandy in here?
You know what? Let's bring Shandi into the game. I'm going to dump all the crap she has on her, though, uh, right in the beginning, just so you guys know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to roll with Shandi. She's actually one of my favorite characters of all time. Um, I don't, in my main community, she's actually in my main community. I don't know why she's here, though, and on the beta. All right, so one more, one more survivor we're going to get here, and it's going to be... Oh, his name is Brian Gordon. Let's remove Brian Gordon here. Go ahead, recruit. Yeah, so I won't need a hygiene because I was, I was saying I was going to roll hygiene, but now that I think about it, chat, Blood Plague is pretty easy to avoid in Nightmare Zone. I actually might just run a cook. We'll just grab a nutritionist and call it good. No, I already got gut packing, right? And gut packing is... Oh, here's the guy I was looking for, chat. Yeah, there. Uh, we don't need Watson. It's like, yo, I, I knew I had one. What, nutrition? Where the hell is it? Tell me I don't have a single nutritionist in here? Oh, here we go. Uh, incredible immune system. Nick has marathon and assault. Just keeps going. Oh, hatchet's pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll roll with uh, Nick here. I'm going to dump all the, the, the stuff, though, in the beginning. Does gut packing give nutrition? That's what I was actually wondering. It does. Okay, so that that's a waste. We don't need that. Okay, so we have nutrition and cooking munitions. Red Talon, Shandi. Uh, I've seen some of you guys saying a medic, but medics don't really serve much of a purpose early game. The only thing you really need a medic for is... Um, Buffs and a level three infirmary, which is mid game. Um, chat, I'm having uh, maybe I'll, I'll just roll a hygiene just for shits and giggles. Yeah, we'll roll a hygiene just for shits and giggles. Um, we got the food gain from gut packing, plague resistance. I can craft energy drinks. We have great talent traits here. Hard as nails. Yeah, we're good. It's good enough, chat. It's good enough. The Oh, Patrick, that is one thing that we need to test out this playthrough, chat, is we got to get a driver. Um, I don't have any of my drivers. Um, I don't have any drivers in my pools, but yeah, we're going to have to check out a driver. I want to see if it really affects so whose turn is it to find more fuel? lake territory. Not me. Last time I ran out of bullets in the middle of a horde. I have a better idea. We could settle. Okay. So for the spirit of the playthrough chat. Uh, how the hell do you drop stuff there? We're not, we're not starting off with any of this crap. And these survivors should be empty. Okay, so we're, we're playing on Nightmare Zone difficulty, but Lethal Zone everything else. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be interesting. But I feel like this setup should feel quite balanced um, from everything I've experienced. Because I've played Nightmare Zone so far. We've played Lethal Zone so far twice. And... Um, I feel like this nightmare zone, lethal zone combination is going to be a good middle ground. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Oosh. Four fucking screamers. Are you kidding me? Oh, we've already tested lethal on everything, Capital. Um, I'm trying to test different uh, 
different settings to to see if we can smooth out the uh seeing that if we can smooth out the playthrough because right now full lethal is quite unbalanced and feels not that great how do you crouch run uh you have to have somebody with the stealth skill uh once they have the stealth skill you just crouch and then hit the run button and they'll crouch run Made it. Gonna start now. <laughs> now, one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring Shandi in the display through is I want to fully test the power of a max stealth character in Plague Territory. I want to see how much... If you have somebody with max stealth, can they get away with a lot in Plague Territory? Because um, once you have max stealth, you're, you're, you're kind of invisible to zombies. Uh, while well, you're at least crouching. Brainless are gone, so it's time for us to claim this place and move in. Good old Drucker County chat. Works for me. The first priority has to be gathering materials. We'll need them to improve this place. I need you to scout around. Started right? off so with a bag. Oh, I gotta get my HUD turned back on. I'm like, why does this look so weird? I, I, I turned the HUD off to take, uh, Screenshots for my thumbnails, and I always forget to turn them back on. Okay, so this map, everything about this map should feel like Lethal Zone. Um, the start should feel like Lethal. The only difference, like I said, is going to be the zombies. So right here, behind our base, we've got a Board. We got four screamers over in front of that house, so that's pretty interesting to see. Okay, so we're going to go grab a little bit more materials. Uh, I believe there's a building over here we might be able to get some from. Time to go risk my neck again. Now, realistically, Shandi should have a bigger... Uh, you know what? We'll send out a different survivor. Um, I want somebody with a bigger backpack for this first run. Uh, the beta is available now. Anybody with the game on Steam has access to the beta. The actual update, though, uh, we have no clue on when this is released. Up Undead Labs is going to be giving us an update on the 23rd of January. Um, so we all kind of just have to stand by and wait till then to see what they say. So if you guys look, Nightmare Zone, start. I don't see barely any zombies. It's nice. It's pretty peaceful. Yeah, we'll be playing AC Odyssey after this. And that's it. Oh, it would just be this and Odyssey today. Ah, nice. Okay, I was worried that this was going to be pre-looted. I'm also going to grab some fuel on the way back. Get the car up and running. Priest says, I only started playing one month ago. Any tips? So it depends. Uh, Priest, what are you having? I guess, uh, what are you having trouble with? Wow, that was all that was in here, Chad. I've never seen that before. This place looks like a waste of time. One rucksack, and that was it. Uh, but what kind of things are you having issues with? Uh, always worth hitting the scout tower, especially if you don't know the map all that well. Definitely make sure you're always hitting them scout towers. I know the maps um, pretty well, so I, I can, for the most part, there's you know a couple buildings here and there. I might not remember exactly what it is, uh, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, always hit those scout towers. So if you're having trouble with uh, waves of zombies on your first base, what you want to focus on at that point um, is equipping, making sure that your your people that you're not controlling um, 
have decent weapons on them because they will defend your base when zombies come. Nothing. Yeah, you guys can see. I, I, so that's why I like the lethal zone map difficulty. Uh, it's nice and stingy. No, I, we just played Far Cry yesterday. Far Cry 5 yesterday, so... Um, I like... You guys know I like to let my video sit for a couple of days, give people a chance to catch up before I uh, go drop another five-hour bomb on... <laughs> Um, hey, let's go fuel up. I actually have no stamina items. Generally, people start with snacks, but because I'm, I rolled with uh, people that didn't have anything on them, we're kind of a little bit more oh, of a juggernaut. What? Seriously? Holy crap, guys. We're almost at 200 likes already? <laughs> we just started. Yeah, you can play this game with people. Um, up to four-player co-op. Uh, so you and three other friends can all play at the same time. Kind of like, uh, like a Ghost Recon. Four-player team. All right, so we got these screamers here. The only thing I'm worried about is them going off and getting the juggernaut involved. But I'm thinking... I might actually grab those health items off the ground just because there's no reason for me not to use at least those. I'll grab those energy drinks, but... I'm not worried about it. So, um, the one thing I can actually do is we'll take out the Screamer up on top, and then I'll try to run over the other three. And try to get all of them killed at the same time. I wonder if I could just take all these dudes out on foot. They are kind of looking in different ways. Now, I know the hordes are kind of connected. But that's generally when you shoot a Screamer, right? It'll set the other ones off. I've never actually tried to melee a Screamer. Okay, nice. So you can. You can just take them out and melee. One at a time. Generally, they're all looking the same direction, or different directions, so it's kind of hard. What do I think about this game? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. State of K is one of my favorite zombie survival games for sure, but it does have, you know, obviously things. Like, when I give a game a 10 out of 10, I'm pretty much saying, yeah, that game couldn't get any better. Pretty much, like, it just did everything perfect. Uh, obviously, State of the K could always use more improvements, um, but if I were to rate it as a zombie survival game, I'd probably give it, like, a, like an 8. Probably a solid 8 out of 10. Maybe an 8.5. It perfect. Alright, so... Initial goals, chat. We gotta get fuel, and we gotta get ammo. Um... And let me check my outs really quick. So, oh, shit. Let's get this going. So we're losing four and a half food a day. Well, almost four and a half.
But we'll head back down to the gas station here. Now, there was a barrel. Hmm. Couple things that we need to work on here, chat. I don't have any melee weapons. What's my score for Days Gone? So I also would give Days Gone an 8 out of 10, but for different reasons. Um, there's certain things about Days Gone, like that. It, I feel that Days Gone doesn't have enough survival elements. And then I feel that State of Decay is the polar opposite. Um, I feel that State of Decay doesn't have enough story elements. So Days Gone, in my opinion, has a great open world, uh, you know, weather, all the stuff like. I feel that State of Decay or Days Gone has everything I wish State of Decay had, and then State of Decay has everything I wish Days Gone had. So if I, you were to take Days Gone and State of Decay and combine the two games, I feel that it would be the perfect, you know, zombie survival game. Um, but yeah, State of Decay is lacking on strong story elements. Uh, there's practically none in the game for the most part, and Days Gone has practically no survival elements to it whatsoever, but a very strong story. Snap, check it out. Mm. Looking for just any kind of like little melee weapon or something. Okay, so the stuff we're getting here is kind of meh. Yeah, I bet I could headshot that bloater there. Yeah, Days Gone takes a. It, it starts off quite slow. Um, I've always played it on the hardest difficulty. I feel like if you play it on anything easy, like it really is a joke. Um, it's very action bat like packed. It's all about like shooting and stuff. But when you play on survival too, uh, you are kind of hurting on like the early game is quite, quite fun. But yeah, it does take a little, um, bit to get into Days Gone. Okay, so as you see here, the reason why I'm kind of bailing on the screamer here um, is because there's a juggernaut in the area, and I'm not trying. If this screamer screams, that juggernaut's coming. And uh, I don't want that smoke right now. Nice. Okay. Ah, Decker, how you doing? Gotta keep our eyes open. Make sure that juggernaut's not coming over here. We should be fine. So, as you guys can see, the start here on Drucker is actually not that bad. Um, there's no play carts right up in your face. Uh, a lot of real estate for you to get initially started. A lot of zombies in this building, though. Holy shit. Okay, running on empty. coming. One of these zombies screamed. So it should be safe in here. The one thing about jugs, look at them as like T-Rexes. They indoors chat and you're fine. Materials. Um, do resources on the map ever replenish after you loot them 
No, yeah, priests, uh, they stay, they're gone. Um, so that's why you got to find other ways. Like, once the map is done with food, um, you got to find ways to get food other than looting. You know what I mean? So you got to grow your own gardens, um, things like that. But there's alternative ways to get pretty much every single resource in the game um, besides looting. There's some fuel. Try to lure this jug around to the f back of the building. Wish I still had that damn firecracker on me. Oh, priest, it's all good, man. We all start off somewhere, you know what I mean? Get in here and get this damn bag of fuel, man. So I can get another gas can over here. So we're going to try to grab that real quick before taking off. Because once I get in the car and start driving, that jug's going to aggro. So I want to make sure I get everything done. Uh, Daniel, thank you for the sub. And Phantom, thank you for the sub. Darren, thank you for the sub. And Matthias, thank you for the sub. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Okay, boom. First melee weapon. Yeah, it is possible to melee up uh, uh, stealth kill Juggy, but it's very, very situational because the Juggernaut has to be standing still, um, and you have to have a certain weapon, and it, so it's like very, very niche. Like, yes, you could do it, but and if you make one mistake, the Juggernaut, because I've tried it before, and the Juggernaut just turns around. My, my phone. But yeah, it is possible to stealth kill Juggernaut. Damn it. Seriously? There's a lot more freaks here than I, I initially thought there would be. Um, let's try to get in this. We'll hit this tower. I'm going to try to scout and see if we can see how close the play card is to, to us. Vesna, how you doing? Okay, I have max heroism actually, so I don't have to do any of this. It's already getting dark outside, chap. Already getting dark.
Uh, is there not a reason I don't use close combat for killing single mobs? Um, so the thing about the d a fable, like, I, I got a perfect reason why I don't do it. Give me one second. I'll, I'll kind of just demonstrate it to you. So the thing is, is you see a lot of people use oh, that maneuver um, where you dive behind the zombie and you execute him, right? You do that spin around thing and then, you, you know, you stab him in the head. It's a great move when you are one one and v one. All right. Um, I think that'll do it. A very very good move when you're one v one. But the problem is, is you get so used to using it that you don't only use it one v one. And you'll see a lot of people who are very really heavy. I'll show you what uh, what movie he's talking about. Um, uh, uh, people that use this maneuver here. Well, I got Max here with him, so. He's not going to do it. But where they like go behind, you swing around, you stab them in the head. And, and, but what that does is you'll see people, they try using it when all the time, even in group fights. The, and the problem with that that takedown is it's too it's way too slow. So what happens is you'll be in a group fight with a bunch of zombies. You're ducking down behind them, and you're trying to stab them in the head and, and flip around. And you have zombies constantly interrupting the, the execution. And you just take a bunch of chip damage over and over and over again. And you see that all the time with people who try to use that execution too much. So I the, I just don't like it because it's too slow. And the way that scaling um, XP works in State of K, you actually get more XP for damage. So if I sit here and I melee zombies like this, I don't I'm, want that I'm getting more fighting some XP some compared to uh, if I just did that execution. Post right here will be amazing. Exactly. It keeps me from falling into bad habits for the most part. Yeah, because uh, like I said, you you get so used to that, you'll see people do it all the time. They'll have five, six zombies around them, and they keep oh, yeah. they'll still be trying to use it. Um because they base their playstyle just around constantly diving behind the zombies. Now, once you unlock the close combat takedown, um, which is let me see if I could do it on this guy. I don't think I will because I have the uh I'd have to unequip this. Now, once you unlock... Let me see if there's another zombie somewhere. Uh, close combat, you get a very, very good behind-the-back takedown. And this is one I would use, even in a horde fight. Because it's fast. You know what I mean? Boom, you kill one, and then you can dodge. Now, it is still possible for you to take chip damage um, while doing that, but it's very, very unlikely. So if you do really, really enjoy that takedown and that's like kind of your go-to, um, just use somebody with close combat then and then you'll get the fast version of it. Shirley, how you doing? Yeah, and you can you once you get um max close combat, you can you can um you can grab the zombies and throw them on the ground and stomp them. And the good thing about that takedown is that takedown actually creates iframes um which means you're invincible while you're in that animation like zombies can't hit you or interrupt it. Um so that's what makes the close combat uh frontal takedown a little bit cheesy, which is uh for those of you guys that don't know not cheesy, but you guys know what I mean. Uh let's see. I can do it here. This one here. Uh, and you can't take damage in that in that takedown there. At least you used to. I don't know if they ever fixed it, but uh, for what I remember is you, you were iframes when you were in that. Okay, so we have all the way to down here, chat, to loot. And probably all the way to, like, up here-ish to loot without having to worry about plague territory. Drucker has a strong start. Yeah, that's what's, ended up, that's what's happening right now. Um, Griffin is... My players, they don't... Like, when you start a fresh start without uh, legacy characters, your people start off as recruits. Um, 
but because I'm using legacy characters, they start off as real high ranked citizens. So that's why there's already so many zombies on the map. Yeah, if, yeah, that's the key to close combat. You can't have a primary weapon. You have to just use the knife. If you have a primary weapon, you won't be able to take advantage of the close combat abilities. Okay. What up, everyone? I'm back. So the only thing we're short on right now is ammo, so we're gonna go hit this gun shop, see if we can get some goodies out of there. I was gonna grab some stamina items off of Shandi, wherever she is. There she is. Oh man, chat, that's crazy. We're already over 300 likes. That hasn't even been hasn't even been an hour. That that has to be some kind of record. You you guys are amazing. I I really appreciate that. Okay, so we got those. Yeah, we're good. Gaming commander, how you doing? We'd like to scout another vehicle in the area too, see if we can get a pickup truck, something with bigger, uh, bigger trunk. Now, generally, a lot of people do rate Drucker County as a harder map. Um. I don't necessarily know why, like what about it makes it harder, other than loot distribution, like like when I classify a map as hard, like what makes a map hard to me, I would say density, fault, like building density um, has a big play in it, um, loot distribution has a big play in it, and right now at least, Drucker County seems to have a pretty strong base of loot in this starter area this place seems loaded with good stuff so it's feeling it's feeling pretty strong right now uh right now honestly the the roughest start i gotta say the worst start uh with this new update is uh is trumbull valley trumbull valley by far is is the worst map that they got it got hit the hardest with this new update there's practically nothing in the start and every, everywhere you need to go to get something is in Plague Territory. Uh, now, the one thing about Drucker County is it is a tough map. Wow. Two, K two shotguns, which... Okay. Not really the greatest weapons, but the KSG is not bad. It's a good starter shoddy. Um, I'm just not a fan of shotguns, period. Um... But yeah, Dr uh, Drucker County is a tough map to not navigate because where players would get in their car and just start trying to beeline across the map, um, you'll easily figure out, okay, there's a lot of areas here where I can't traverse. Like, it's really, really hard to drive. Uh, but I tend to not do that anyways. Like, I, I kind of got out of that habit a long time ago. And I, I, for the most part, follow the roads on every map, even Ma Meager Valley. I'm always following the roads, even though I can just cut across the field. Uh, I do that because it's easy for you to get hung up on something, hit a bloater that's laying down in the grass. Um, but if you stick to the roads in Drucker County, it's simple, simple, simple. But yeah, you just, you gotta, you do have to change your mindset and just stick to the roads like if you're not sticking to the roads you're gonna have a, a rough time in Drucker for sure I believe Dead Space comes out on the 27th and uh, yeah I'll be playing when it drops Sounds like we're alone. the chance of me getting a, a nice sidearm here 
Ooh. Chunk. Like, Trucker has a full gun shop, chap. Uh, so Frillian brings up a point. He says, um, you would need loads of gas to drive around on the roads um, on Drucker, though. But that's a misconception that people have because, honestly, I feel that you spend more time, right? You spend more time driving down here, realize, oh, I can't get up over here. Driving over here, oh, I can't get up over here. Oh, I can't get up over here. Just to come back out and take the roads anyway. I feel that people waste more gas trying to figure out shortcuts through the map and then not working out than if you just were to drive on the road. You know what I mean? Do uh, you cover news or updates on State of K3? Uh, yeah, I mean, but the, the problem with it, there is no news or updates, Phantom, on State of K3, so that's why I, I haven't done any videos on it. There's zero information that the devs have dropped uh and i'm not gonna sit here and like just do cheesy clickbait videos on like no information um i'd rather just wait till there's some concrete if you do know the sh shortcuts yeah it's good but i would rather wait for there to be concrete information that we can all actually get excited about instead of me just like pulling shit out my ass So I am going to keep the KSG. Um, I was thinking about running crossbow, but not yet. We'll drop that in there. A lot of plague zombies that freak out when that happens on my maps. Uh, tips. Uh, yeah, if you you want, if you're worried about plague zombies, the, the only difference with, between plague zombies and regular zombies is they can infect you. So if you are worried about getting infected, just make sure you have the cure with you. Um, and that's it. Just make sure you carry around some cure. But yeah, plague zombies are the same as normal zombies. They just infect you when they attack. Okay, so we got enough materials. We're going to start off with a infirmary. And then I we'll do our workshop next. We do got to get some more materials, though. So we'll go here. We'll get the med in, meds and the food there. Anybody got time to help us with some shit? I'm headed your way now. Gracias, amigo. Yeah, that, yeah, the only information, like legit information that's ever been released or stated to K3 chat is the announcement trailer, and that's it. Everything else is speculation or just flat out not true. Or just people's best guesses. Okay, so the cool thing about killing that juggernaut is there's my plague samples I need for the mission. And I don't have to go farm plague territory. 
But man, look at all these freak zombies that are already showing up. Uh, do you think if it's ready, uh, you'll get a demo of what State of the K3? Do I think I'll be able to demo State of the K3? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know a lot of the developers at Undead Labs. You know what I mean? I know some of them. Um, you know, I've spoken to some of them. I've streamed with them before. Um, but it's not like, you know, I'm like best friends with them or, you know, they contact me all the time about this, that, or like, I don't, I, I maybe if, if they see that, if they see they could probably benefit from it, maybe, but, um, I, I can't speak on them as a company. I, I, I have no idea, uh, if they would even reach out to me for something like that. Uh, but a lot of that stuff isn't up to the developers either. It, it comes from, you know, uh, I, like I talked to Jeffrey about it before and he he kind of said it. He was like, you know, that's not really a decision that, you know, I make or we make as a team. Like that comes down from the top. A lot of their, because the content creators, like when it comes to content creators and developers, a lot of it is considered marketing and, um, any marketing type stuff is done usually by like Microsoft level um, because it's a Microsoft studio. So they would have to like reach out to Microsoft, make sure that it was okay. Cause there's liability and all. there's a bunch of legal stuff that comes into, you know, working with game developers. There's a lot of uh, contracts you have to okay. sign and hush hush stuff. And um, you know, I've already done NDAs with Microsoft and Undead labs in the past, but I don't know. Maybe. Priest, holy crap, thank you. That's a huge super chat, man. I really appreciate that. Man, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And again, Priest, welcome to the game. I hope you're enjoying it. Oh, the difficulty we're playing on, we're playing on Nightmare Lethal Lethal. So Nightmare Zone is the action difficulty and then Lethal for the rest. The other two. But a lot of people ask me, you know, like, when do you think State of the K3 is going to come out? And I tell people, because uh, people are all oh, State of the K3 2023. And I'm like, bro, you want, like, like, let's be real. Like, you know, look me in my face and tell me that you want State of Decay 3 to come out in 2023. Like, let's be, who, who in chat wants State of Decay 3 to come out this year? Because I can tell you right now, I don't. Because I can tell you right now, if State of Decay 3 came out this year, it is not going to be the game we want it to be. And that that's that's what it comes down to, chat. If that game comes out this year, not going to be the game we want. It's going to be nothing. Um, I'm on the fence of the game even coming out next year. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, sure if, if State of Decay 3 came out in, like, 2025, I could be like, okay, yeah. I, I maybe maybe they release it in like end of 2024 uh 2025 and then you know they kind of do it a game because they, they already said you know they're going to treat state of k3 like they do state of k2 which means they're going to be constantly updating the game even after release um so i'm like you know a four like uh, a big four maybe five year development time cycle uh i i could probably get excited about that you know what i mean But yeah, any sooner than that chat, that game is going to be butt. <laughs> it's too fast. Nothing left to find here. 
You know, just look at if, if they make a GT a Grand Theft Auto game in three years compared to a Grand Theft Auto game in, in six years, which one do you think is going to be better? You know, obviously the game that they take more time and invest more polish and stuff into is always going to be better. Um, and they learned the hard way with State of Decay 2. Uh, State of Decay 2 was pretty rough on release. And honestly, that is the reason why State of Decay 2 That's pretty heavy. is in, in the situation it's currently in. Um, because it, it, go around, you know, ask random friends. If you guys got friends out there, right, who, who, who game for the most part, maybe they're more into like mainstream games. You know, if I walked up to a random person, right? And I was like, hey, man, have you ever played um, Dead Island, right? There's a ton of people out there that are going to be like, yeah, yeah, Dead Island, that was a cool-ass zombie game. You know what I mean? Or Dying Light, you know, Dying Light 1. They're like, yeah, 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 that, that was a really cool zombie game. But then you say, hey, man, you ever played State of Decay? And they're like, what's that? Uh, no, dude, I've never even heard of that game before. And I'm like, you've never heard of State of Decay? Um and what happened was this, when State of Decay 2 released, it was very bare bones. There was one difficulty. Uh, you could pretty much play the game and see everything it had to offer within like 8 to 10 hours, maybe 20 if you really, really pushed it. Um, and only difference that we had, it was all standard zone, chat. It was all standard zone. Um, so it was very, very bare bones. There was no DLC. There was no anything uh, when the game first came out. And then the game came out in April, and we didn't see the first real major DLC, which was the uh, the Echo Weapons and Daybreak until the I believe it was like November. And uh, but before that, from April to November, there was no updates. The game was very meh, and most people stopped playing it. So the game came out. People were like, oh yeah, it's cool, but yeah, no, it was a it was a very it didn't have a big flash when it dropped and um you know the developers even talk about that to this day they're like yeah you know there were so many things that we wanted to do with the game um but we didn't have time but now imagine if they would have released state of decay 2 in its current condition back when it first released imagine that you know what i mean imagine this game now releasing back in 2018 it would have been. It would have made a big splash. You know what I mean. It would have been huge, uh, with all the different maps and the stories and the missions and the mechanics and stuff like that. The difficulties. It would have been a completely different uh, game. You know what I mean. And then when you go around and you ask your friends, "Hey, man, you ever played State of K two? It'd been. You know, you probably would have got some different answers. A lot more people would probably know about the game because the game would have been a lot more mainstream. Uh, and the developers, they learn from that, you know? So they're going to definitely want to make sure State of Decay 3 is in a better place. Um, and they're probably going to have a faster, you know, update cycle. DLCs coming out and stuff like that for the game a lot faster when that game releases compared to this one. At least that's what I would do if it was my business. Okay, so we got one more house we're going to empty out. I like to stay nice and close by. That's the cool thing about Drucker at night. Um, you can kind of just come out and loot this initial cul-de-sac, get a bunch of little goodies uh, without really having to put yourself in danger. Once you got your resources squared away, uh, we will go down here and get these meds, though, out of here after. And, well, and that's the thing. With it being a with it being a Microsoft's only studio game, uh, that obviously kills um, that kills the game's you know how far it could spread. But the the State of the K two has always been PC. Always since day one of its release, it, I played this game on PC. But it was on the Windows Store. It wasn't on Steam. And a lot of people don't buy shit off the Windows Store. The Windows Store is garbage. Um, so most people don't use it. So if they would have released the game on Steam and uh, Xbox early on, it probably would have been a lot better for the game. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, Windows Store and Xbox only when it first released. But I feel like if a game comes out and it's, you know, one console and PC, it, it'll do okay. What about The Last of Us Part 3? I'm, I'm so excited about that game. Um... I that game probably we won't see that to probably what 2028 2029 
Uh, they definitely take their time with those Last of Us games. <laughs> Shit. It was, what, six? No. How many years was... The first Last of Us came out in, what, 2013? 2014? I think there was like a six or seven or eight, maybe even like eight years in between the two games. Seems quiet enough now. Yeah, so 2013, and I know they said they started working on the second game um, right after the first one was released. I think we picked this place clean. Well, they already said that they're working. They're de they've already started development on The Last of Us 3. Yo, the lighting in Drucker at night is, is is nice. I like it. Uh, what we've seen of these other maps has been they've been quite dark. Uh, Drucker seems to be nice and lit up for the most part. Damn shark hoodie, man. Now, you got to be careful. If you put this damn thing in your supply locker chat, you can crash your game, at least on the beta. Um, so that's why I'm not messing around with it. Dead side on sh on Steam. I've never even heard of that, Justin. Dead, dead side. Damn it. There we go. Okay. So generally, if you log out, log back in, you can get it to get it to work. Okay, so we do have a feral over here. We'll clean him up real quick. He's gonna engage us when we get down here to the collect these meds. Do it on your own time away from stream. <laughs> Why is it bad? I mean, if, if we're gonna play, if I'm gonna play a game, I'm I'm playing it with all of you guys. You know what I mean? Like, we'll experience the badness together. Surprised Feral didn't come all the way over here. Oh yeah, they this game is completely different, uh, you know, compared to when it first came out. Hey, Dem Demonic Slayer, thank you for the sub, and Crossraiser, thank you for the sub, guys. Um, it's State of Decay, yeah, they, they, the developers have definitely done a good job keeping this game alive because the way it released, it could have very easily have died, this game, but... Um, they, they don't lie, chat. You know when they when they sit there and they thank their community, um, because it's it's honestly it's the long term state of decay fans who are diehard fans of this game and this series. You know, people like me, probably like a lot of you guys who play this game no matter what. And honestly, we're the ones that kept the game alive because if 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 people just stopped playing it, you know, like most people did. Uh, the game would have died. Yeah, you wouldn't hear about State of the K2. They wouldn't have had the money or the resources to keep updating this game currently. Like, Microsoft would have been like, alright, no, let's just move on to the next project. It, um, who knows? That might even have messed up the potential of even having a State of the K3. But, you know, you look at games like Days Gone, you know, Days Gone 1 did quote-unquote so bad, which 
I still don't see how the game did bad, um, but it did quote unquote so bad that we're not even getting a sequel. You know what I mean? But I believe it's, yeah, Game Pass did a lot for this game. Those Game Pass royalties must be really, really okay, nice. I've seen what there is to see. Uh, for it to completely fund and support a game. Uh, like I said, I don't, I don't know what Game Pass royalties are like for developers. But they can't be too bad. Okay, so we got our meds. I, I want to engage this feral now on my own terms. Here we go. Yeah. So we're also testing this Nightmare Zone, zone gunshot. That was an unsuppressed shoddy. Ooh. Wait, you're saying Days Gone only sold 8 million? That, that's, that's actually significant. I think State of K3 was over, what, 12 million? No, 12 million. I know they sold over 10 million. Because I remember them talking about it. It might even have been over 12 million. That's a little lower than I, I, I expected. If I'm being honest. A cross razor. <laughs> Poor community is with Jesus. <laughs> hey, but you. Google says State of K sold what, 4 million? What? what 4.5? I mean. That's a lot, man. Oh, it had a twenty-eight million dollar budget. Oh, uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That stings, which is crazy, man. Because Days Gone was a really good game. It's so underrated. Like literally, it's so underrated. Chat. I want to do another playthrough of that game just to just to show the world, chat, that it's a good ass game. Like, type a F in the chat if you've never even seen Days Gone. If you don't know what it is. Let me, let me see. Let me see them Fs in the chat if you haven't seen or played Days Gone. Oh, wow. That's actually already more Fs than I ever expected to see. I haven't seen, never heard of it till recent. Wow, chat. I I know. Didn't wasn't there a petition that was done for Days Gone? Wasn't there like a petition that players were going around, like gamers were trying to get the game uh, because they said no to a sequel. I I wish I you know what, what I wish. Is a studio, a game studio with some money. You know, whether that be like a Ubisoft or... I don't know. I, I wish there was a studio out there. Maybe even a Microsoft studio that had a little bit of cash that would buy the license for Days Gone and, and do a sequel for it. You know what I mean? Like, we obviously know that it's possible. For, look at that island, too. You know, that game bounced around like three or four different studios. I wish somebody would, you know, buy the license for Days Gone and, and, and really make a, make a sequel to it. It's such a good IP. There's so many things they could do with that IP. I'm 
Okay, so now I need to start doing some planning here, chat. Outpost placement. Um, this starter base is actually in a very, very good spot for outpost placement. That's cheese right there, first of all. Um, so just so you guys know, Drucker County is probably the strongest map in the game. This starter base right here. Uh, because you can build an outpost right here in the shed next to your base. Arm it with traps. And as long as you have those traps engaged, zombies will never be able to touch your base. Period. That's it. One outpost. Push the circle out. You'll never have to worry about zombies. Stay the uh, ask you a technical question. While playing State of Decay 2, did you ever have the problem with your mouse sen re sensitivity randomly changing mid-game? Um, Mannequin, no. Um, the only issues I had with my mouse, um, I use a, 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 let me see here. I use, I actually use, it's, it's weird. You put, it's probably a bunch of PC gamers going to laugh at me. Um, but my mouse is actually a Naga. It's an MMO mouse. And the reason why I, I've used this mouse forever, I play all games with this shooters, everything, because it's just comfortable um it's the mouse i've used and i've gotten so used to the side buttons that i just i key bind everything to all these buttons on the side um but the only issue i've ever had with m my mouse and not even necessarily just with stated k i don't use my my mouse wireless um I, for some reason like it doesn't happen all the time but there'll be like moments when i'm on my wireless mouse and i'll go to like move and it just doesn't register it Period. It just doesn't register. So I'm like sitting there swiping a bunch and then eventually it'll like pick up. And I'm like, what the hell was that? Um, and I noticed that only happens when I don't have my mouse plugged in. So I, I have a wireless mouse and I never use it wireless ever. Um, I always keep it plugged in. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I love this mouse chat. Like I've used this mouse for pretty much since I started PC gaming. So I uh, I don't know. A very, very long time. I've always been a Naga guy. Uh, Razor, Naga, that's my mouse. You know, if I had a sponsorship with Razor, I would 100% stand by and, and endorse this mouse. It is it is good. Uh, some people with really big hands. And the thing is, is, people are like, oh, I got really big hands. Um, that mouse is too small. That's what a lot of people will say. I have humongous hands, chat. All right? Like, this is a stick of deodorant. In, in, in my hand, you know what I mean? Like, I have very, very, very big hands. And um, I can, I, I use this mouse just fine. And you guys see my aim is relatively decent. Uh, but that's a lot of things you'll hear. People, oh, the mouse is too small. I have big hands. I mean, if you're like Shaquille O'Neal, maybe, you know. Oh, yeah, I had room for it. But... You know, be like kind of like playing with a little, <laughs> but no, I, I, I mean, hey, chat, you know, you know what they say big hands, <laughs> big gloves. Outpost, all set up. So I'm gonna set this Maybe outpost up here temporarily. Here to um, I'm gonna eventually move this outpost, but uh, with all these goodies in this area, I want somewhere to drop it without having to go all the way back to base because it's frustrating. You play with a controller and a mouse? How the hell do you even do that? No, I actually, I, I, I'll take it back. There has been some instances where I've had a controller plugged in and I would swap from mouse and keyboard to controller, but that's mainly with um, driving games because driving on mouse and keyboard is actually annoying as hell. Like, very, very annoying. Um, so I would get in a car, boom, I'd grab my controller, I would drive. As soon as I get out the car, I'd go back to mouse and keyboard. 
Um, but for the most part, I just I just like games. Uh, I can play any game that doesn't have shooting mechanics with a mouse and keyboard or with a controller. You know, uh, a lot of the old AC titles, I never used a. Uh, I never use mouse and keyboard. I always use controller. It is more comfortable. Uh, mouse and keyboard gaming is it, it, it is quite taxing on the body because uh, you have to sit a certain way. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, I can't like slouch back like this and kind of just like chill. Um, where if I had a controller in my hand, I could I could just kind of sit back and throw my feet up and just play the game. However, you know, and kind of just chill and chit chat and blah blah blah. I, yeah, I can't do that because I can't even reach my freaking my desk. You know what I mean? But when you're playing on mouse and keyboard, the one downside is to it. You know, you have to sit practically straight up and down. You have to have your arms a certain way. You know what I mean? And you have to position your body. And it, it is a little annoying sometimes. Okay, so that looks good, chat. We're doing all right here, resource-wise. Um, and I got the plague samples we're going to go drop off once the sun comes up. I wanted to make sure it was nice and light outside, so I... Because I believe this enclave... Where are they? They might be in plague territory. There's some... Uh, maybe not. Because I this new... I, they moved the starter play cart. The starter play cart in Drucker County uh, originally used to be here and the starter enclave would spawn like down here uh then they moved the play cart into where is it the warehouse there was like a warehouse right here and it used to always be in there and then now they moved it up to here so generally that means the plague territory is going to come to like this area ish so you got you want to see yeah so this survivor here that we're using uh, she's hygienist. That's her traits. And that's her skills right now. Uh, let me see. There you go. Uh, I'll show you the other ones later on. They're all survivors from our last playthrough for the most part. Uh, that we just did. Jocelyn, how you doing? Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. And uh, Steven, thank you for the sub. All right, let's see here, chat. Hmm. It's something. Uh, but you know what I'm most excited for, honestly, guys, for State of Decay 3? More than any feature, any update, anything like that, is... like, uh, And I, I think you guys, you know, a lot of you guys that are ARC, the ARC players uh, that, that come to me, you know how you guys are like, you know, it's so refreshing and like, I wish I could go back and re-experience the game again. That That's how I, I am with State of Decay. Like... I watch all these people that are brand new to the game playing, and I'm like, man, like that, that I, I couldn't even imagine like how awesome that's going to, like, I can't wait to be a noob again. You know what I mean? Like State of K3 is going to come out and I'm not going to just know the game inside and out. I'm not going to understand the mechanics. Like, yeah, maybe there might be some transferable skill. But for the most part, I'm going to be a noob again, chat. You know what I mean? I'm going to be getting wrecked. I'm going to be having to adjust to things, learn all these new things. It's going to be amazing. Totally, brother. No way, man. With the 10 gifted members. Thank you so much, dude. I really appreciate you, brother. Holy crap. And everybody who received the membership, welcome to the family. Totally always out here showing so much love, man. We got one more house up that way. I'm not really too worried about that one right now. Let's uh 
Let's get these plague samples and go link up with this enclave. Ooh. Actually, chat. This is a plague horde? Outside of plague territory? Uh, I'm going to light these dudes up. See if we can get a couple more samples. I think I have a Molotov, right? Yep, got a Molotov right here. And I got a firecracker. Boom. I got no samples from that. Not a chat. Not a dang sample. Am I ever gonna... What the hell was that? Did you guys see that? Or was that just me like having a stroke or something? Okay, so it's not just me. Huh? I'm like, dude, I'm tri am I tripping out? Yeah, you guys saw that green light, right? I don't know what that was. <laughs> it had me feeling like I was losing it for a second there, though. Oh, we got to get some fuel. You never go towards the light, chat. Never go towards the light. <laughs> oh, you ferals think you're so quick. They, they are pretty quick, so. It's down the road that way. All right, let's go see, visit this enclave. car is so bad off-road. How's it going? With these plague samples, I can make something that'll cure blood plague if one of us gets infected. So we got a uh, 500 influence and a rucksack of fuel. We're going to see if they have a, a repair kit for sale. I sure appreciate it. Stay alive, uh, right? But I got to say, chat, hey, so You're far, Drucker County has a pretty solid start. Uh, when it comes to resources, pretty solid start. Hey, buddy, I almost missed you. Uh, suppressor. Some news for you. Hey, all these plague hearts aren't gonna clear themselves out. Yep, yep. Now the suppressor's a good buy, chat, only because it saves me from having to rush a level two workshop. And um, I can get my first gun quiet. I'll buy these Molotovs. And I'll buy the stamina items real quick. You know, I might even buy these this medicine. Yeah, let's buy the medicine too. We're in a good way. Let's get all this stuff back to base. And then I want to head up. Uh, we are going to kind of creep up this road here because now we're going to enter plague territory but there's a military checkpoint at the corner here that i kind of want to uh scout out see if we can get up maybe a sidearm something like that is it past this campsite here 
Adam, brother, with the super chat. Thank you so much. Was sure you'd blow up the car within the first hour. Deals the deal. Oh, Adam, thank you so much. <laughs> now, I've been trying. I've been trying my hardest, chat, uh, to get better at, you know, not blowing my cars up as much as I used to. Um, I feel like I've turned over a new leaf when it comes to cars, chat. You know what I mean? My, my driving isn't as atrocious as it once was. But seriously, brother, I appreciate that. It really means a lot to me. So that execution right there is the one that we were talking about earlier. Was sure you'd blow up a car within the first hour, and a deal's a deal. <laughs> and, uh, holy crap, guys. Already over 500 likes. And we've not even been going for an hour and a half. You... You guys really don't understand how huge that is, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> this is nightmares on chat. Good amount of zombies, man. Gotta respect it. We gotta get on top of that. I didn't sign up for this kind of Somebody stole our food. Now, because I actually have an arsenal now, I'm gonna approach this mission a, a little differently than I usually do. They have updated car inventory spaces, yes. Not for every vehicle, though. So, um, like, this car still only has four, um, but a lot of the pickup trucks and things like that, they're massive. Uh, the vans can get up to 15 slots. It's it's truly, truly something crazy. Okay, so take control. Shandi wa wants to go after the uh, the thief. I didn't even know Shandi was a warlord. Let's switch over to her. Come back safe. Yo, watch yourself out there. Alright, so we gotta get our food back. Yeah, anytime you have this mission chat, make sure you don't forget. Uh, it's very, very easy to... Uh, it's very, very easy to kind of let this mission kind of slip through the cracks, and you're just losing resources. People are... They stole food from you, you're not gonna get it back. That, that food is gone. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure you stay on top of your stuff and get that food back. Alright, so I am going to stamina healing. Uh, now, I'm actually going to kill this guy. Which is, it might sound surprising because I generally don't. Anybody ever read that book about Eagle Eye, the mm. army sniper in Afghanistan? Good mission, too. He grew up around here. And I bet someone with his skills is still alive. We should try to find him. Um, I generally don't do this, I'm sure. but we're on nightmares. Ooh, I might actually still not do it. There's a juggernaut. I don't know how strong this shotgun is going to be versus this dude. Um, let me see if I can eliminate this jug without too many issues. Sorry, but not sorry. Drop it, buddy. Let's both just bring it down a step or two. <laughs> So I, a lot of you guys have probably seen my, the outcome where you just tell them to drop the food. It's very, very peaceful. They drop the food and they take off. Um, 
That's one way to handle this mission, but there's actually multiple levels to this mission. Um, and it can you can get yourself some pretty decent uh, starter gear. And I'll show you. Now, like I said, it is quite dangerous. And I would have loved to have done it with a different survivor and not Shandi, but... Uh, so we're actually going to just threaten this person. Now, they do have a gun, so we, we got to be careful. They're going to be shooting at us. Uh, and they're also going to be coming at us with melee, so we want to be careful. This is what happens when you fight them. Oh, whoa, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Time for you to go straight to hell. Don't do anything you'll regret. You see that damage? <laughs> so this is what happens when you kill them. I know you guys heard those other gunshots, right? We got a muerto here. What's going on? Did you kill our friend? So then her homies show up. Now, I'm going to assess the homies. Uh, so she actually, look at that, PPSH. Great gun. Good melee weapon. He has... He has no gun. All right, so if I engage this team, I need to focus her down first. So you can, yeah, there's different levels to this. So um, you take on the first person. These guys show up. Now you can just tell them to go away. Or you can kill them too. Uh, and in doing so, you get three survivors worth of loot. They're engaging the zombies. I'm reloading. There it is. Feels good to take out the trash. They won't be bothering us anymore. And voila, chat. We just got ourselves some good gear. So that's how that mission can go if... You just if you do, if you kill the person in the beginning instead of uh, taking the shit, but yeah, we just got a Soviet um, PPSH, nice nine millimeter weapon there. Yeah, he didn't really have shit. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean. Yeah, the shotguns in this game, they're not loaded with, uh, definitely not loaded with, uh, slugs. <laughs> Yo, we should take a minute and be proud of what we just did there. I feel like we're running around shooting these guys with birdshot. Now, the issue with, um, the guns you get off of the survivors is they're very, very beat up. And this is actually how it used to be back when, uh, play cards had loot and on my guns all the guns in the play cards used to be beat up too i really really wish undead labs would bring that back because um one of the most op things in the game is the fact that play cards give you guns you know what i mean so if a map they they you know they went ahead and uh this was one of the main tunes that they did for lethal zone and i never quite understood it and i actually questioned it when i was a lethal zone tester was 
The whole premise behind Lethal Zone was guns and ammunition are supposed to be really, really rare, right? It's supposed to be super, super hard to come across. Now, if you play a Lethal Zone map, all right, and you don't loot any guns out of a play cart, you're not going to find very many guns on a map. It is it is very good. The balance is nice. Like you can, you will still get a decent arsenal built up, especially if you start working with traders and things like that. You can get your arsenal pretty big. But their purpose was, you know, we're going to pull all these guns and all this ammo out the map. Um, so players have to try harder to get weapons. But then they just added more play cards to the map. And every single play card in the game has a gun in it. Every single play card. So if you're on Lethal Zone, that's 28 guns you're going to get from play cards. Guaranteed 28 guns. Um, and I don't care what people say. It's not like play cards are that impossible. So once you get your first three or four play cards done, the gun struggle's over. Like, you you're, you got guns for days. Um, so I really wish... But back when in the day, it didn't matter because, they yeah, a play cart gave you guns, but then you had to invest parts to repair said gun. The gun would be, you know, 100 parts broken, and you'd have to... And I'm, I was like, okay, you know, I'm okay with that because it's not just a freebie. Like these, you know what I mean? Like, this is the condition of weapons you would get out of old play carts, and it felt good because I'm like, yeah, I just got myself a PPSH, but now you would have to be like, okay, now I need somebody with weapons handling to fix this, or I have to invest a bunch of parts. Because to me right now, this PPSH, it looks like a good gun, but it's damn near broken. You know what I mean? Um, so the only way I could actually make use of this gun is by repairing it with a weapon with a weaponsmith or a weapons handler, which I actually have one in my community. This Red Talon, um, he can fix the gun if it breaks so i can actually go ahead and use this i could probably use the nine mil too you know what? we're gonna use the nine mil over the ppsh right now just because i don't have a whole lot of ammo but i can get this nine millimeter up and running where did my Yeah, I bought a suppressor, didn't I? Where is it? Might still be on my other survivor. Maybe that's the only that's the only other thing I could think is that it might be on my other survivor. Let's go back up to base really quick and check and see. Because I had a suppressor. I think it might be on the survivor, though. So early game, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's nice I found this Glock, but it's very, very broken. Probably gonna break within a couple shots, especially with a suppressor, a cheap suppressor. On this, it's not gonna last more than a couple hey, shots. Every time I hear that, I just think of Camille. <laughs> so he's got a shoddy. Here she is. Please have the suppressor on you. Yep, there it is. Yeah, this thing's not going to survive many shots, but, uh... Just who the hell's in charge in this place, huh? Now we got a nice little G17. Let's head down to that military checkpoint. Uh, and see if we can get our hands... Or I know, hopefully get some more 9 mil. Their selection is huge, but the prices are high. Us for the difficulty, just so you, so you guys can see, uh, we're playing on nightmare lethal lethal. Uh, just testing out the balance and seeing how it feels. And it's so we're playing on custom, and uh, so far it feels pretty good. Still pretty, it feels pretty good. Oh, uh, Tanner, thank you for the sub. All right, let's head down to that military checkpoint. 
Now, I could go visit that the um, that enclave because right now there's a bug in the beta where all the stuff they sell is super super cheap. But I don't like taking advantage of that. Uh, undermines a lot of survival stuff. Got it. Okay, so now we're going to be entering plague territory. So we want to watch out for screamers. And we want to make sure we're not killing too many zombies. So now we're in. Must be a plague heart nearby. Better watch out for plague zombies. So my goal now is to literally kill nothing. Sticking around here too long would not be smart. Get in, loot, and get out. She has max stealth, so she's a like one of the best looters you can have your hand because you can fast search with her without a search crash. This is gonna come in handy. Okay, so it was pretty meh, uh, if I'm being honest. <clears throat> um, but what we are gonna do. Since we're here and we have this stealth character, I want to test her stealth abilities to get into this uh, auto shop down here and get out without waking up anything. And she also has marathon, so when I'm underweight like this, uh, that's why I don't really load her up with much. She's carrying a sidearm. Uh, she's carrying a single sidearm. And Juza, I put a smaller backpack on her, and she's traveling light, which means she has infinite stamina, even while sprinting. Do I like using normal survivors over Red Talon? Um, I, I do personally. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. Oh, this is the play cart. Yeah, I should obviously have remembered that. So this is the ultimate test of stealth chat. But red I don't know, red talons are pretty damn good. What a wonderful smell we've discovered. Here for a repair kit, baby. There it is. Okay, we're good. Let's get out of here. Uh, the, the hoodie I'm wearing? I don't remember where you get this ninja hoodie. I think this one is, uh, because I, I love this hoodie, the State of Decay ninja hoodie. Um, I don't know if you have to unlock this one or if it's just automatically unlocked. I don't remember. Red Talons do feel pretty powerful. When you're playing with them on Lethal Zone, they, they do feel pretty balanced, um, because they could die pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, they, they are quite strong. Survivors, which is to be expected, you know what I mean? They're, they're like special forces operatives. Operatives. So yeah, to search without crash with fast searching, you just have to max stealth. Once you max stealth, um, you get the hundred percent or the. It, it, it doesn't even show. It just says minus fifty percent. Um, but it's actually 100%. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but... Right. I'm kind of on the fence. I, I'm like, oh, do I really want to invest this repair kit right now into this car? Ooh, see, good thing I looked, chat. Good thing I looked. I was like, Yo, maybe there's a pickup truck around here. Look at this. Pickup truck right on the other side of the fence. There it is, chat. I even have gas. So we're going to swap vehicles right now. Oh, <laughs> such luck. Okay, 
Damn, that didn't do anything. Well, it fixed the engine. Didn't give me any doors back, though. I, I sometimes, James, sometimes I'll search the special weapon crates when I remember. Um, I don't usually go out of my way to get them, but when I do remember, yeah, I, I, I usually like to check them. Like, I know there's one over here I can actually go check. I'll probably go check that right now. That's a baseline truck. Now, eight slots to... Okay, let's go down the hill here. So I'm trying to do this without killing a single zombie. And as you can see, it's working out relatively good. I think the case is down here somewhere, right? I mm, wonder what's over there. I've never even seen that guy up against that mountain there. The, uh, th this is the thing about State of Decay. If you, if you travel around the map, like literally all... Just because there's not an icon doesn't mean there's nothing there. Um, as you can see, there's things just scattered all across the map. Uh, little, little Easter eggs. Uh, little teeny little loot spots like this area right here. There's nothing here that shows you that this is here. Um, but then you come here and it's like, boom, there's special weapons crate here. A couple things here. Um, so yeah, just explore the map. And I just got a King Vulture 44. Not a great gun. Too loud for my taste. Is that it? And you can't suppress it. Yeah, I actually don't mind Daybreak myself. You know, I play Daybreak a lot. I used to play it a lot solo. Um, I never understood that. Like, I get, like, if you play it all the time and you're, like, super, super grinding it, like, yeah, it could get annoying. But uh, I never had that, that hate for Daybreak that I see a lot of people have. Like, yeah, you know, the game mode could have been so much more than it is. They could have added new air, like, you know, just add new maps or something like that to it. Um, it, it you know, just add something, but at the same time, I don't know. For what it is, it's okay. I think it's tense. For those of you guys who don't know what Daybreak is, um, give me a second and I'll actually show you. Daybreak is a very good way to train. Um, it's just a good it's a good way to train your your combat skills because the people you play as, um, or you don't if, if you die it is whatever you just start another you start over again. Um, so I used to use Daybreak a lot for training. The juggernaut. I used to use it a lot for just getting better at melee combat. You know, um, getting better at shooting. The ultimate. Pl Why am I getting in here? Forgot we got a truck now. Okay, so let's see if we could still get out of this plague territory with no, no issues. There's a zombie killed, damn it. But it's just one. There it is, chat. In and out of plague territory, no, territory, no incident. Hit the back here. There's some chemicals we can get. If I could add anything to this game, what would it be?
Hmm. I'm gonna need a lighter load soon. I would say probably a new freak. Zombie. So I'm trying to think of within the realms of what's possible. Um, I'm declaring this location set free. A new zombie freak. Horses. That's the kind of stuff I want to see in State of K3, actually. I, they need to have horses set. Cars need to be rare. And a nice community project to get up and running again. And we need to have alternative modes of transportation, like motorcycles or horses. Well, you think about it, Max, right? Horses, yeah. Um, because if you look at anything, um, you look at any zombie lore, any zombie show, Walking Dead, all of the eventually, um, as time progresses in the apocalypse, vehicles break down. No, no, I, I know. I, I, we talked about it before, Max, but a lot, um, uh, a lot of people. When I, I say horses, like horses, why would you want horses? Because lore wise, it just makes sense. You know what I mean? A lot of people, when, 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 you know, cars start to break down, fuel becomes really hard to get your hands on. I don't, I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and right now it's state of decay. There is no struggle for vehicles. But then at the same time, if there was a struggle to get vehicles, there's no alternative to the cars in the game. So you have to walk everywhere. And that feels bad also. So I sit here and I think, Okay, if they added horses into State of Decay, w instead of us having to use fuel as a resource, the only thing we would have to use is food as a resource to keep the horses fed. Maybe they have a stable facility or something like that. You know what I mean? Say that like you know, like you build a stable facility in your base, um, and you could have your horses there. You could name your horses or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't whatever they wanted to. But then you just have to maybe invest. I don't know, two food a day or a food a day or something like that for your horses. And then you can go out on horseback, ride across the areas that are hard to traverse um, while you're you know, in a car, but horses can traverse the woods a lot easier, mountainous, like off, you know, uneven terrains. Horses are just better at that. They're quieter in video game terms. I know in real life, horses are actually quite loud, but in, in video game terms, you know, they're quieter alternative to, to cars. Um now, the downside to the horses would be, or the positive side of horses would be, you know, they can traverse, they can get in smaller places, um, they don't cost fuel, but they don't have storage. You know what I mean? No storage. So at that point, you know, that's where vehicles would come in handy. So you'd have to switch over, use vehicles if you want, um, you know, if you want the speed, if you want the storage, but then switch over to, like, I, I really feel like, you know, a lot, a lot of games, um, do horses like like uh, even in uh the the last of us their main source of transportation is, is horses because it just makes sense you know what i mean but it doesn't make any sense three years into the apocalypse i just go out grab a random car put some gas in it and drive it you know what i mean maybe throw a repair kit on it like that it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense so common sense that but else. when it comes to the the combat though for horses I do feel like if 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 zombies come, you should have like a shoe button or the horses automatically run off and and then you just have to like whistle it back or something like that. Uh that way, you know, because people go, oh, "Well, how how would you how would you know your horse be if, if you you know, if if a feral came or something like that, like either A, they could have it so the horse auto runs off, but then I feel like that would kind of kill it. I feel like it should be the player's responsibility to shoo the horse away because if you don't shoo the horse away and then your horse gets eaten by zombies, that's on you as a player. You know, that's a mistake you made. Um, so I feel like, you know, if the horse uh, or if zombies come, you know, you whistle or shoo the horse away, it runs off, deal with the situation, then you just call it back. All right, we'll give that base defense. Um, go back to heat. I thought about planes and helicopters. The only thing is, though, I don't know if it fits 
in the lore, chat. You know what I mean? Like, as cool as it would be to, tra like, I would love to traverse in a plane or how, but realistically, like, four years into the apocalypse, what sense does it make, you know, if, if we had helicopters and planes? Like, even when I see that shit in Walking Dead, I was like, how the hell is there a helicopter? You know what I mean? Like, now, if there are helicopters, they, and they, maybe they're maintained by, like, huge military operations or red tailing operations or something like that but for just like a normal group of survivors living out of a house in the middle of a broken down city you know what i mean i think it would be a little weird for them to just have access to helicopters I seen so many earlier say something about me reading chat. I, I I do try my best to read chat, but you know when there's like 900 people, it's really really hard to keep up with everybody. Okay, so what are we doing here? Tell me, let me. So we got a trader here, Echo Lab Envoy. Um, I'm actually gonna go check that out. That is an amazing trader to get early on in the game. Um, I actually have a bunch of stuff I can go sell them to. So we'll sell this 44. Now, this kind of just set the tone for the playthrough. Uh, but it can also be a bit of a setback for me. No, nah, but I play too much Red Dead. <laughs> um, but realistically, you know what I mean? That's the kind of stuff I, I, I want. I want. I don't know. When you look at the trailer for State of Decay 3, and it's, like I said, it's just it's from my point of view. You know what I mean? And I don't speak for the whole community, so that there's always that. Um, you know, what something I would want in the game necessarily might not be what is the be even best for the game or what everybody would want. You know what I mean? So that, that's why I just speak from like something I would like to see. And, you know, I would like to see the game fall back more on crafting. Um, not like Minecraft level, like out there cutting down trees and making pickaxes and things like that. But kind of like when I say crafting, um, like like what they have in the game now where you can make your own melee weapons, like with a forge. Um, I feel that, you know, we should be able to make our own basic melee weapons. Uh, instead of going out and finding everything, allow players to craft uh, weapons allow us to craft more um, ranged weapons, but whether that be bow and arrows or crossbows, kind of like they already have in the game, and uh, st still have guns, still have you know your regular guns, your and and lootable crossbows, lootable compound bows, and things like that. But have those things just be a bit more rare. That's it. Just let, have them be a bit more rare because. It, it, in, in the apocalypse, it's not easy to find this shit, you know, and especially years into the apocalypse. Um, and I feel like there should be hunting in the game instead of going out and only looting for food. I feel like you should be able to go out and, and hunt a deer. And like, I already, I've already put this into like pretty basic, you know, how it, they could make it pretty basic. It doesn't even have to be a huge hunting mechanic with these skinning and then like, like being like, it doesn't even have to be that in depth. Like literally... I'm pretty sure most players Horses would be interesting, but they are a giant mass of smelly meat. <laughs> Better hope them zombies can't sense them by smell lol. Uh, they'll end up like them walking dead horses, right? Uh, Nilski, thank you so much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. But when, it, when I say hunting, um, it, a, a simple system like this, you know, just going out. Imagine they have a wooded area. You go out with one of your survivors to get some food because all of the grocery stores and shit like that's looted around where your base is and you don't want a garden and you want to do something else um say you go out in the woods and say there's a deer or, and it's not a zombie deer say there's a, no, a normal deer out there you got your rifle you put your suppressor on it give sniper rifles a good boom you shoot your deer fucking it runs off you track the blood or whatever or just go off and you find it and the animation could be this simple chat you go up your survivor sits there does some freaking they got a little bit of blood splatter and then just give the person a bloody rucksack on their back with a food symbol on it it could literally be that simple and then just go back to base and deposit it just like everything else um it doesn't have to be super in depth it doesn't have to be any it's just immersion and an atmospheric you know what i mean like 
I just went out. I hunted this deer. I got this bag of food. You bring it back, and maybe the bloody rucksack gives you two food resource back at base. Simple. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Exactly. like Just like harvesting an animal. Boom. And it just turns into a rucksack. And, and if they do want to have like a hunting station or something like that at the base, exact, if they do want to be a little more in depth, they could have a facility in your base that's focused around hunting where maybe you can craft things in there. I don't know, maybe better fucking backpacks or you know, I don't know, like like anything, you know, make make big backpacks hard to come across. OK, um, make maybe make make like you can craft like a freaking nine slot backpack using, you know, hunting resources or something. I don't I don't know if they wanted to make it more in depth. They could. I, I'm not even asking for it to be that in depth. I'm literally just asking for just giving us the ability to go out, hunt an animal and cut it up and bring the food back to base. Uh, the other day I asked if we can get another Days Gone playthrough this year. I've, I've been thinking about it, man. Yeah, I've definitely been thinking about it. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I sit there and I'm like, it, there's a lot of loot that doesn't, that is kind of pointless after a while in State of K2. Like, like once you're through a playthrough, right? Like, halfway. Or, not even halfway. What is the point of looting more backpacks? Other than fashion, right, chat? Other than trying to find a backpack that matches your survivor's clothes, I guess you could say. Once your survivors have... All have backpacks, what's the point of looting any more backpacks? There's not. It's not like backpacks deteriorate over time. It's not like they break down. Um, so you just find said backpacks and just mulch them in the parts. There, there is no point. Um, Interested? Yeah, okay. Okay, so this one does not have the biochem station. But they do have the repeatable crossbow, but we're not on lethal zone, so I'm like, uh, is it even worth using this damn thing? But even when a survivor dies, which, you know, it's not like your survivors are dying like hotcakes. Even if you keep, let's say, three extra backpacks, I've looted... Like 40 plus backpacks off a map. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's. I don't, there, it's just. There's a lot of I got some stuff to pointless trade. loot in the game oh. after a certain okay. point. I guess so. Okay, chat. So we're up to 1600 influence. Um, I'm not going to buy this crossbow. Uh, is there a potential Far Cry? No, no Far Cry 5 today, unfortunately, Dick. I'm sorry. I will grab this. Pretty much the only thing I want to buy from this tree. I thought about buying a bloater gas because it's really not that expensive, but that's that's one play cart. Yeah, you know what? Let's buy it. Screw it. It's only 100 influence. Um, but yeah, this is 750. I don't really want to mess with that right now. It's quite expensive. And I in lethal zone, I don't really see or in nightmare zone, I haven't really felt like I needed the crossbow like that. I'm like, yo, why can't I access the trunk? Okay, so there it is. Uh, the hungry survivors are up here. They want fuel. Hey, you are. I'm headed there now. I appreciate that. Okay, so in order to make I this extra time, so I made myself useful. happen, chat, this group wants fuel. I don't have very much fuel back at base.
So I don't want to take it out of my own stock and bring it to them. We're going to have to send... We're going to have to go out and loot some. And then I will bring that to them. Ooh, man, there's a lot of freaks. A lot of juggernauts in the area, chat. Now, because I am going to be going into plague territory, because I don't believe there's any other fuel in this area that's not in plague territory. Uh, we're going to have to venture over. There's a gas station here that we can hit, and I'll send in my stealth character. Open intro, State of K3 is going to be Brian Minority. <laughs> Uh, survivors are dying like hotcakes on Lethal Zone. Well, I mean, then you just go get the, then you just go pick the backpack up off the body, right? You can always get your backpack back. Ah, oh, Priest, I thank you so much, man. You have a great night. Neil Ski with the Super Chat. Are you going to watch the new... Oh, yes. Definitely watching that. It comes out tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? I think the 15th, they said. All right, we're going to give her a smaller bat. Oh, I sold all my ultralights. Okay, so it's all good. I'll get another one. Um, Let's see here. Let's head out, grab this fuel for this enclave. Uh, what do you think about the option to remove vehicle collisions off the road? That, that would be pretty cool, you know, if you could, like, go around, like, kind of like Project Zomboid, where you can go around and, and break down the vehicle um, wrecks and stuff and, and, like, maybe get some scraps or something from them. Like, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. I'd like to see stuff like that, you know, breaking down the vehicles for metal parts and then reinforcing your base walls with them. And, you know, it, it'd always be really cool. But that that's why I wish they would. When I want when I say I want information about State of Decay 3, it's I, I there's no like I guess the way I look at it is there has they have to at least have the direction of the game figured out at this point, at least the direction of the game they want to go. Um, And I'm just like, come on, you all. Like, just at least let us know, like, the direction that you guys are, are, are trying to go with the game. Uh, so we all at least know what to maybe expect, like, where in the wheelhouse. Because right now, the game could be so many different things. Um, I, I just want to know the direction that they're going with it. I don't, like, what are they going to be the focal points, you know? Are, is the game going to be more focused on this or that? Or is it going to be more grounded in this? You know, it's just so many. That That's what I'm looking forward to. Stay with the 14 months. Holy shit, brother. Thank you so much. Okay. So we gotta be... I gotta be a little more... Paying attention here. Um... Sticking around here too long would not be smart. Going into plague territory, champ. So we're here. Now we're going to... We'll park on the edge of town. And we're going to have to go in on foot. Oh, yeah. Undead Labs has not reached out to me at all for State of Gate 3 chat. I mean, granted, even if they did and I was working with them, um, I wouldn't be able to talk about it. Because yeah, I'd be under NDA. But if I was, I'd at least be able to tell you that I was working with them. 
And I can honestly tell you, I've, I, I know nothing about State of the Case for you. Like, believe it or not, chat, the, the developers don't treat me any differently than any other person that plays their game. It's not like I get special treatment or if Brian Menard says something, like, they say, like, no, they like they don't care. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just like everybody else. They, they, they look at me and they appreciate me uh, for playing their game. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get anything special from them. They hook it up. Uh, sometimes they'll give us, like, they'll give me some codes for the community. Um, to give out to you guys, but now realistically, that okay. like no that could be on my end, like because I don't go out of my way to by. I don't go out of my way to reach out to them, you know, for stuff. But at the same time, I don't, you know, they don't reach out to me really either. So Undead Labs didn't send me a war an, an award. Um, the uh, the Red Cross, you can't see it because of my green screen. Uh, but the Red Cross sent me an award. Yeah, that was uh, that was from the Red Cross, not on the uh, UL. But they've sent me plenty of merch, um, you know, for free. Uh, they they do it for a lot of content creators. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they've they've given me shirts and um, like a state of decay, like uh, I, I don't know, collectible type of stuff. They've they, they've they've definitely hooked me up. Um, great developers. But what I mean is I don't have any say in anything. Uh, like, it's not like they they come to me like, oh, you know, you're an expert in our game. Like, what do you think about this? Like, you, yeah, they, they, they just deal with that. They have their own experts in their own office, you know, that they rely on. Oh, Bad Monkey, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Any love and a uh, like while we wait for Odyssey. There it is. Yeah, we'll be playing Odyssey here in a little bit. I want to see what's in this container. So it is pretty easy, chat. When you have a stealth character, it's it's easy. In and out of plague territory, no issues. Well, that's the thing, guys. When the state of K three comes out, I'm not going to be good at it. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be bad. I, I get reset to square one like everybody else. I mean, they got some people that are pretty good at the game. Their QA testers are pretty, pretty good. Um, Joe Swarner's pretty good. My thing is, is like, I could have, like, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys, chat. Like, I probably could have got a job with Undead Labs. Like, like they had positions open. They were looking for, like, a community person. And I even talked to Jeffrey Carter. He was like, you know, you'd, like, you'd be perfect for that type of position. I'm pretty sure if I applied for, like, that type of position, maybe... I could have got hired, but um, I, I, let's be real. Like I'm, I'm a YouTuber. You know what I mean? I, I don't want a fucking job, <laughs> you know, because then I got then I got responsibilities and 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 stuff like that. I got I, like even if Undead Labs offered me a, like a job, I would I would I would I would say no. I'd be like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I wouldn't give up streaming and doing what I do now to be like a... Nah, hell no. That just sounds terrible. I gotta go drop off this fuel. My playable character would be Hard as Nails, Root Beer, Merrick. <laughs> there it is. <laughs>
Now, as cool as that would be, you know, to, to get involved in, in, in like games and stuff like that, uh, in development, and it, I, I don't think I could ever give up what I do currently, chat. Thanks. Um, for anything else, you know See what I mean? Around. See you soon, I hope. Hola, amigo. Mi casa is su casa. Hey there, business partner. All right. Hmm. So they do got a bag of ammo here, chat. Now, the thing is, is there's not a whole lot of ammo in Drucker County. At least... So on the backside here, there's a military base, a medical tent. There's a roadblock here, but it's always preluded for the most part on lethal. Here, you can generally find so there's a military base here too, but it's you generally preluded. And I think you can get ammo out of this location, maybe. Not 100% sold on that. In this town here, there's a gun shop here. But nobody's trying to go in that plague territory. And then there's a police station here. And like maybe one other spot. So yeah, there's really not a whole lot of ammo on Drucker County. So I might, I might actually buy this rucksack of bullets from him. Because anywhere I go right now for bullets, I'm gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to go into plague territory. But I want to look into outpost placement now. There would be Brian Menard, that would be savage if uh I was a play Yeah, see I would I would love like like a, an Easter egg like that or something, like if they added me in as a playable character. Now a lot of game devs and studios and stuff like that, they gotta be careful with that because they generally they have to pay people. But the thing is is I would I would do a lot of stuff for Undead Labs for free. Like they ain't gotta pay me anything. I'll test State of Decay 3, I'll be a, they could put me in the game, name, this, that, like, those type of Easter eggs and stuff, like, are awesome, and, and I would never ask them for a single thing in return, um, but yeah, it's, I don't know, I, I can't speak on a business, you know what I mean, I'm not on their end, so I don't know, but a lot of the stuff, chat, you gotta remember, there's a lot of liability, um, when it comes to content creators and anything really there's a lot of liability and that that's a lot of the issues you'll see okay where is she at Alexis is over there okay so so far Drucker County has been the easiest map to avoid waking up play cards period um we've been able to go around and get a ton of loot but now we are running dry on stuff, and we need to come up with our, our plans. So I'm thinking for outpost placement. I won't have to worry about these hearts on this backside. I'm thinking maybe the first bit of hearts we should focus on is this area here. I could hit the cell tower and scout out, see what... You know what? Yeah, let's do that. Let's scout this play area out. I want to see what's... Because there's a lot of loot in this area. And now the cool thing about Drucker County is it's very hard for players to traverse the map, which would mean um, it's probably going to be very hard for zombies to traverse the map. So I, I have a strong feeling that the zombies are going to be very, very focused on following the roads in Drucker County. And because... Because the way that the, the roads are set up in Drucker, I feel like it's going to be very, very easy to cut zombies off. Very easy. Um, this right here would be the only sh crappy part. As if, like, say this play cart was awake here, it would probably send hordes down, and then said hordes would come up this road and attack my base from the back. Um, but for the most part, everything's going to have to come up this way. So we could probably move this outpost here to right here. Okay, and that will 
create outpost traps where nothing will be able to come from the south. And then I could do this fuel outpost, but thinking resource wise like we could probably do that yeah we could do a fuel outpost here and that will cover the north if you need the materials you could probably use this one too hmm. but yeah because, you know, at, at we ran into issues with fuel trying to keep the traps up and running. So I'm thinking if we have an outpost designated or like specifically designed for getting us fuel, that might help. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to head over here. We're going to scout this. I want to see how many play cards are in this area. Hmm. Uh, Cranker, how you doing? <clears throat> uh, you have got a plan for which base? I, I don't yet, Paul. Generally, the base I go to after this base, um, I usually go for, uh, Wally's here. And I'm looking at Wally's, and I'm like, you know, I could get some pretty good outpost placement here for Wally's, too. Wow. Oh, good grab. This might just clear up. What happens when you're not paying attention to chat? I don't even know how that zombie see me, but... Um, yeah, I generally go for Wally's. This would be a really powerful base, too, actually. Uh, because the zombies aren't going to be able to get to it. And you could block this road off with one outpost. Neilski with the super chat. Thank you, thank you so much. I was uh, watching an old Dark Side stream last night. Uh, you only had four K subs, and you said you'd never hit hundred K, but now almost at seventy five. I, I, it's I know it's crazy, Neilski. Never thought I'd see the day, man. Uh, Brian Menard Easter egg would be so dope. I don't know. Maybe I'll get one. Who knows? Uh, like I said, I'm. A, a lot of the guys who do the Easter eggs, like Brant and stuff like that, like like I know Brant. Brant's cool as hell. I'm not super super close with Brant. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of content creators out there, that are like really really good friends with Brant. Um, and a lot of the content creators that get Easter eggs have like a personal relationship, almost like with really good friends with the developers. Not saying I wouldn't be friends with them. I just haven't had the opportunity to really be friends with the developers like that. Um, so. That that's where you know it's a little different for me. Okay, so I'm gonna head through this way. I don't even know if you can get to that cell tower going this way, but I'm gonna find out. Put me in RDR two. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I, Rockstar games are a huge thing that, uh, like, I, I don't play very many Rockstar. I don't think I've ever, have I, I, minus, like, the little GTA we've done on the, I don't think I've ever played any Rockstar games, really. Yep, it's a freak. Um, I play a lot of Ubisoft games, and I actually have a Ubisoft rep now, which is kind of cool. Um. I, out of all the development teams I've worked with so far, I gotta say, the, the, honestly, the the one that caught me off guard and is probably the coolest out of all of them, um, is Ubisoft. Like you, I, I keep forgetting that I have a Ubisoft rep, and then, I, I, but I, and I keep buying Ubisoft games. Um, but yeah, Ubisoft's like, hey, if you ever need games, just like hit us up. If, especially if you're gonna be covering them on content and stuff, and you know, they're really, really cool, really, really cool. Uh, you know, they're always offering me DLCs because I'm like a Ubisoft partner now or whatever it's called. Um, they're always offering me like free DLCs and stuff. It's a, they're a really cool company when you when you get into bed with them. I just Looks like nobody else is keep home. forgetting. With a play card around, that won't last. Oh, shit. Okay, this is a little bad because that zombie spotted me. And they're going to scream down there, maybe? Let's see. 
I might be okay. Yeah, I played Red Dead, but it's not like I, I don't play like ro a whole lot of Rockstar games. Oh, well, no, we did Red Dead 1 and 2. That's about it. That's nice ish. So yeah, that's really. Like another play ooh. card. It's really all the experience I have, chat, for uh, Rockstar. We did a little bit of San Andreas and Vice City when that, that uh, thing okay. came out. That might just be the most perfect outpost spot ever. I mean, I don't really know what kind of other IPs they have outside of like GTA and uh, I see some survivors, Red Dead. I'm not sure we I know they have like Bully and, and stuff like that. I've never played any of those though. Wow, it's actually a lot of play cards, chat. Is it always like this? I don't remember there are always like five hearts. Hmm. Okay, so that's going to complicate things a little bit. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that it was that that thick. Five freaking play cards. That's crazy. Um I'm curious how many are up in this town too. Cause I was like, oh, you know, I could I could start off by, you know, taking out this one, and we kind of just slowly make our way through here, which I still think is our best bet. Cause when I, uh, I can defend the northern part of my base. So that's where we're gonna start off, chat. I'm Brian Menard Easter egg saving. I'm not you're surrounded by freaks there. <laughs> I'd be I'd be so honored if they did something like, like 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 that type of stuff. You know that that's that's a pretty big honor. You know what I mean? Now, I forgot that I'm on a lethal map because for some reason, you know, I knew we were doing the Nightmare Zone thing. So I was in my head. I was like, oh, Nightmare Zone. Um, we're going to have way less play cards. But I forgot I'm playing on a lethal map. So we actually have lethal amount of play cards. Uh, that's why we have the overlap like we do. But yeah, I completely slipped my mind that we were uh, had a lethal map. Oh, there's another enclave here. Oh, that's the ones who have the expensive weapons. A feral broke into my house. IRL, what would I do first? Oh, man. Try to get my kids away from, like, you know, out the house or out of harm's way. Uh, that's why I said if the zombie apocalypse ever really broke out, chat, I'm I'm dying first. Like I'm I'm gone. Like, I have no chance. So nice to see you. Like I'm dying right off the bat, just trying to keep the first feral away from my kids.
Okay, so we do have the Builder Plunder mission. Uh, but I want to focus. I want to I want to see I want to set the tone for this play play playthrough here. We're going to get these two outposts going. Get these traps going. Location is secure, guys. You can thank me later. I have some thoughts on how to improve this place even more. Here we go. Our first try to traps are active. We have this whole area unlocked. Now I'm going to move this outpost to here. Anybody listening out there? I can use a hand. I'm going to lure him away. There we go. Cure this now. It's traps. Is up and running. Dead. And if we want, we could spend some time and make it even better. Okay, so Juggernaut's gone now. So this is what I meant. Um, we have really, really, really good coverage. No zombies can come from the north. No zombies can come from the south. The only place we would have to worry about is if the zombies are smart enough to know, okay, this area is blocked and the hordes start doing this. Like if the, area, the, the hordes come up, turn this way, and then come down the backside, I will still have some issues. But I don't plan on waking up any play cards in the south right now. My goal is to start chipping away here at the north. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to Oh and that is way too much. Seriously, holy crap. Hearts in the chat already, you guys are... And seriously, thank you. That is a really, really huge and generous super chat. I really appreciate that. I hope you're having a great day today. Seriously, thank you. Um, This further let's send Brian and the family to dinner. Thank you so much, and I, I really do appreciate you. That means a lot more than you, you really know. All right, so we're in a good way, chat. Um, let's go uh, hit the site here for some materials. Uh, it's phased with the two months. Lit stream will actually drink some root beer while watching this. Yo, root beer is, I'm telling you, root beer is number one. Uh, I do not want to let that screamer bring friends. I wouldn't say number one. It's pretty high, though. I don't really drink soda like that, but if, if I do, root beer is definitely on the top of that list. So, the, 
Okay, so it's lethal zone. Then lethal zone action difficulty. The traps are only good for an hour and a half. In nightmare zone, they're good for three hours, right? Because those traps we were setting in lethal chat, those weren't three hours. There was no way we were getting three hours out of those. Oh, Rachel with the two months. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep playing the games and I'll keep coming back. Thank you so much, Rachel. I appreciate it. And Juan with the huge super chat. Thank you so much. Just ordered a PS5, um, an Xbox player to play games like Spider-Man, Miles Morales. I uh, love the first Spider-Man and God of War Ragnarok. I've seen you play PlayStation games. So which would you really recommend I play? Ooh. Put me on the spot here, Juan. Um... Oh, uh, I mean, realistically, which do you like? Do do you like superheroes more? Are you more of a Spider-Man guy, or is God of War really your thing? Because I think it just kind of comes out like God of War. I I, I would say, content-wise, both games have a lot of content. I, I don't know about Miles Morales. Miles Morales might be a bit shorter than the original. I don't know if that's a full-length video game. Um, so I I can't, I can't but I I could tell you for a fact that with God of War, you're going to get your money's worth out of content. That game has so much content, especially if you're doing the side quests, stuff like that. There's a lot to do in that game. Um, and the story is amazing. I, I, I thought God of War was amazing. So if I were to pick one, Just I would probably pick, God, I'd probably pick God of War. I'm an Xbox player. To play games like Spider-Man Miles Morales, I loved the first Spider-Man and God of War Ragnarok. I've seen you play PlayStation games, so which game would you really recommend I play? Um, but yeah, that, that that's what I, I'd probably I would probably personally pick God of War. <clears throat> um, oh man, Galbertus, thank you so much. Uh, hardened survivor, that is huge. I appreciate the membership, and Army Gal, thank you so much for the membership. Welcome to the family. You guys are show, sh throwing a mad love here, but yeah, it, uh. There's some good uh, recommendations in the chat also. If you are going to P uh, PlayStation for your first time, uh, games like The Last of Us or Days Gone are other uh, also games I would uh, recommend checking out. <laughs> the Moonshiners... So yeah, we're good. Um, I was going to wait till daytime to go mess around with that play cart, but I think once we get back to base, we might just gear up and see what we can do. Yeah, PlayStation has some pretty attractive uh, exclusives. That's one of the downsides to Microsoft uh, in the past recent years. Is PlayStation still to this day, I feel like, is still coming really, really hard with exclusives. And it's kind of been dry drowning out Microsoft, in my personal opinion. Like, what does Microsoft have? Halo? I've never even played Halo a day in my life, like, other than a little bit of multiplayer. And State of Decay. But that's not even a true Xbox exclusive because it's on PC also. So it's like, what exclusives does Microsoft have? Forza? PlayStation has Gran Turismo. I mean, I think Forza is a... At least uh, the older Forzas I found to be better than Gran Turismo, but... Gears? When's the last time they even released a Gears game, though? High end life is on every every system. At least it's on PC too. Yeah, we're talking we're talking true exclusives, chat. But you know, if I had to put my stock in, let's just say let's let's say Halo, let's say Gears. Um, Looks clear to me. 
When I personally take Halo and Gears of War and stack that up against Spider-Man, Horizon, The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, um, Days Gone, all, all around, I just feel like PlayStation has the better exclusives at the end of the day. But that's if you have to, you know, only have one, like... That's why I kind of like having a PC, because I get the best of all worlds. <laughs> For the most part, you know, most console games are coming to PC nowadays, so it's like, if you have a PC, you, you get access to everything. You get PC exclusives, PlayStation exclusives, and Xbox exclusives. I, I've thought about it, Callie, streaming that Forspoken game. I don't know, though, um... Quite an expensive game, and I don't even really know if I'm going to enjoy it. And I, I, I hate going out and spending seventy dollars on games um, that I'm, I'm not even going to play. Yeah, Mill. That's what they say. They say that PlayStation games are going to be coming to PC. They're still not doing it, man. Like, a lot of the Microsoft exclusives day one are releasing on PC. Obviously, because Microsoft... Microsoft, you know what I mean? But, um... Yeah, like, I'm still waiting on The Last of Us Part 1. Like, that shit doesn't come out till March, you know? And I feel like there, it's a very, very slow trickle when it comes to PlayStation games coming to, to PC. Like, Uncharted was supposed to be released, like, a billion years ago. And in the end, they only ended up releasing Uncharted 4. Like, they didn't even do the older ones. Like, we only got one Uncharted out of the, the four games. So it's like, eventually, yeah, we might get the PlayStation games on PC, but it's taken. They're definitely taking their freaking sweet time with it. All right, chat, let me see here. So we're going to go this play cart first. And uh, I do want to thank you guys for over 700 no likes. No going to have exclusives anymore. Sony is putting everything on PC. Maybe not day and date, but it's all going. That's what they say, Chris, and that's what I'm excited for, man, because I'm obviously a PC gamer. But I got to say, the PlayStation games, because... And I I had a, a, a I had somebody explain to me, because I was like, man, why are they taking so long to port these games on the PC? I don't get it. And it's because when they designed the games, like... They designed the way the graphics work, the way they're rendered, the way that it's just not compatible, I guess, with PC. So a lot of these games that they have to port over to PC, they have to completely revamp the control schemes because PCs, mouse and keyboard, things like that have to be completely revamped. Um, a lot of the way the graphics are rendered because ultra graphics textures that never existed in the original versions of the games have to be created for the higher resolutions that people are going to be able to see on PC. So I, as soon as it was broken down, um, I was like, oh, wow, that is a lot of work. Um, that is a lot of work that they actually have to do to put a game from and I don't know why I was like oh I, for some reason I thought it would be a lot easier than that but no it's actually a ton of work for a game company to port a game to PC and um it takes sometimes it could take years for them to do and I was like and uh, I heard that it's easier though if it, when a game is being developed if they take the PC port into consideration while they're developing the original game, um, obviously it's a lot easier for them as a development team. Uh, that's why I was super su surprised on The Last of Us uh, because I was like, they knew they were putting it on PC when they did The Last of Us remake. And you're telling me it took them an extra like six months to do the PC port, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, it, there might be new textures and it might look even better on PC than it did on PS5. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. But when you open up a PS5, you know what I mean? For the most part, it has PS PC parts in it, you know?
But we'll see going forward, chat. We'll see going forward. Hopefully it gets a little better. Um, but yeah, I would love to see... Uh, I would definitely love to see more of those games, those exclusives coming to PC. Thick skill right there, chat. Be sitting there dancing while loading a shotgun. Okay, this is gonna be our first play cart. I'm gonna bring these mollies. I have a heavy weapon. It's not an ideal heavy weapon, though, chat. Generally, you want something blunt. Uh, sledgehammer, this will do. Um, this is definitely not ideal. I might even bring a little... We all need to learn how to kick some ass. How about we build a fighting gym? So when I kill this play cart, it's going to be interesting to see how many other play carts wake up. Seems like the fuel gauges are getting close to E around here. I feel like they're all going to wake up. Or at least these three. But we'll see. So the system could, could pick up pretty quick uh, going from this point forward. Let's do it. Arc is going to be tomorrow. Chat. Yeah, tonight we're doing State of Decay and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. go. Wish me luck, chap. I don't even have a freaking plague here with me. Better keep an eye out for plague zombies. Feels hot enough to boil water in here.
should let us reclaim some of this area. So I woke up these two. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. So we got a repair kit. Awesome. I might be carrying too much here. We're going to have to get some water back at base, so I'm going to build a uh, rain collector for right now. The saw blade didn't perform that bad, chat. It was all right. It was pretty consistent on damage. No place is ever really secure. Well, for lethal zone, I'm a nightmare zone, and I want to do lethal soon. So, Tommy, honestly, what I'm doing here on this playthrough is, if you're, if you are a nightmare zone player, all right, this goes for anybody in chat. If you're a nightmare zone player, um, with ambitions to to move into the lethal zone, I would say the play with the settings I'm playing with right now, and it will kind of give you a good base on how to get used to, um, not having as much loot. Uh, things costing more. Just get used to how that feels. And then go and crank the zombies up to lethal. But I would probably start with this. Leave it on Nightmare. Deal with the zombies. Because the, the Nightmare Zone still has quite a few zombies. Um, some pretty nasty hordes and shit that you still have to deal with. Um, but crank up that community difficulty and that uh, map difficulty. And just get used to how that feels. And then uh, start a community uh, with full lethal. Okay, so yeah, this is a little sucky. Um, I was thinking about maybe getting a... I was thinking we could get a, a, an outpost for, for scouting. Um, but we're going to have to take out some hearts before we can do that. And then the cell tower that we have down here, that won't really spread north. Where that's where we need the uh, scouting is up north. But let's let's head out. Let's see how this system's gonna kick in. I think there's already a horde moving right there. Yep, already. Yeah, this system wastes no time, chat. You wake up a play card. Boom. Uh, do I like playing 4X games? What is the true definition of a 4X game? Um, like, like, how, like, how do you... What would you say the criteria of a 4X game is? Is that a company or... I can't remember, guys. I'm, I'm not super savvy on this type of stuff. What's a, what is a 4X game? Bobby, I'm doing good. How you doing? No, I do like strategy games. Yeah, I mean, I play a lot of... Uh, no, when it comes for me, I, you know, I like city builders, um, military strategy games like war, uh, you know, war game, 
uh, Command and Conquer type games, uh, Rise of Nation, Age of Empires, um, uh, uh, like, uh, what is it? Men of War, Assault Squad. Uh, I, that is actually probably one of my favorites. Assault Squad 2 um, is one of my favorites. Uh, si you know, Sims, or not Sims, uh, Civ. I like Civ quite a bit. So, Muko, what's going on? My favorite snack. Hmm. I actually weirdly got this addiction chat. Um, I had to stop eating them. Because I was like, I got addicted. But I, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups out of nowhere. And over the past, like, month. I don't know if that COVID just changed my uh, my palate or something. But, yo, they were I was smashing these things. They were so good. Uh, but I, I like like beef jerky and um, I, I don't know. I'm I'm, almost, I'm I'm a pretty big savory snack guy. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty big on like savory snacks, so like beef jerkies, things like that. Okay, so we got a horde moving to the unfinished house. This one should just get zapped, right? The horde sizes are pretty big. Even on Nightmare, three bloaters, 14 zombies, and a screamer. That's a that's a good size horde, but that should go bink, zapped, and you are dead. Should hear the little... There it is. Most scavengers focus on big items. If we stock up on small comforts, it'll add up when we need to trade. So this civilian vector is actually a pretty good weapon to have in the community right now. Why are we even considering that? Okay, we gotta go out and get some materials, chat. We gotta get our, uh, so I can get some there. So one. It's another one that's gonna get zapped. Yeah, so this northern plague, this northern traps, we're in good shape. I, I could probably honestly turn this one off for now. So I'm only seeing one bag of mats right now in the AO. At what point um, do you recommend moving to a new base? So Old School asks, at what point in the playthrough would, do you start considering moving to another base? Now, I would say that all depends on you and what your community needs to survive. Um, generally, I stay because the start the, the original starter bases uh, for State of Decay, they're very, very powerful bases. Now, granted, there's no large slots, so no trade depot, um, things like that, but it has a kitchen built in. Um, and three small slots. You can honestly beat the game pretty easily in this because it has beds that support up to six survivors. So you can have six people living in this base. You can easily support all those people with food outposts. Um, and you can easy clap beat the game in the starter base. 100%. The only, um, but there's obviously, you know, if you want to move into bigger bases, I would say when you get to a point where you need something like, okay, there's no more resources on the map. I'm having a hard time. I need a trade depot. That's when you have to, you, you need a base with a large slot. Or if there's something specific you need, if you need more food growth, try to move to like a farm or, or I need more fuel storage. I need like, it, it all just depends on what you need because each base has its own benefits. You know, like this one comes with a machine shop, huge fuel storage, a backup generator built in. So if you need electricity, this base has it. It has two outdoor slots, one small, you know, so base it off of what you need. Um, if you if there's facilities that you want to build, like say right now, I'm like, damn, I really want to build a fighting gym. And I really I need I need more beds and I want to build a generator and a watchtower. Obviously, I can't fit all that stuff in the base because th these are mandatory in every base. You need a freaking workshop and you need an infirmary. So that's two slots that I automatically just consider. So realistically, this base only has one slot because for me personally, these are 
shoo-ins. They have to be in every base I move in, unless it has its own built-in workshop. Um, but when it comes to all the other stuff, that's when you got to start thinking, okay, I need a bigger base. This one slot isn't going to cut it anymore. You know, I need two or three slots. So that's when you want to consider moving. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to go out and get the, at least this one bag of materials right now. We got to figure out how to get more. Now, I have woken up the play carts here. But not down here. But there really isn't any materials in that area anyways. Everything's pre-looted. Yeah, so there's no mats up there anyways. Man, I woke up those play cards for, like, nothing. There really is nothing in this town. We got some trailers that we could loot. Uh, water storage tanks actually has materials in it. There is a bunch of sheds down here, but I don't want to risk waking anything. If we're going to wake anything up, I want it to be in the north. Where we already have the smoke. Oh, materials here. There's a bunch of materials here. Are there different types of outpost traps? So no, there there are different things though. There's lures in an outpost where I can I can I can set lures here, which attracts all the zombie hordes into the outpost zone, and then there's just the explosive traps. But Daniel, I'm having fun with the update. There's definitely some balance stuff that needs to happen, like 100 percent There's some shit they need to balance out. Um But overall, I think if they get the balance good, this will the update will definitely be a upgrade to the current system. If they release it as it is, it would definitely be a downgrade. Was the first. But yeah, for the most part, like I said, the update is is good. Um, there's definitely a couple things that are in it that I absolutely can't stand, like the the play cards that automatically awake. Um, there's just no reason for that. Um, even the overlapping play carts waking each other up is is pretty counterproductive. Um, the rates seem quite a bit. They seem quite high. They could probably just not even. And I'm not even saying by that much. Like tone it down just a like a teeny teeny bit. Um, because yeah, the the spread rate is quite high. It can get out of control quite quick. But that's a that's a hard one because they did give us tools to fight against the spread rate. So, um, I honestly don't know if that's I I would want them to change that because a lot of people are like, man, the infestation spread really quick. Now in lethal zone, yeah, they're, they're, they spread wicked quick. Within ten minutes, your map could just be just flooded. But I feel like if they fix the other problems. Like play cards waking up randomly, or you know, even the screamers screaming outside of plague territory waking up. I feel like if they if they fix those issues, 
the spread rate won't matter because there won't be all these random play cards that players are going to have to try to play around. Players will have play cards they know are awake. They'll be able to build outposts in the area to deal with said play cards. Um, so honestly, I've, I, I, it's it's hard for me to tell right now until they balance. Like, you know, if, if they leave the spread rate as it is, but fix all of the I- other issues, who knows? The spread rates could be fine. Because if you only have one play card awake at a time, maybe two, and that's your choice as a player, and you've built outposts around that area, area to deal with it, um, yeah, it probably wouldn't really be a big deal for you. Uh, but with all of the other little issues that the, the, the update does currently have, it's kind of just compiling into this really bad feeling system. Um, I mean, ultimately, like, could I play in the system and have fun? Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys see me. I'm, this is my what, fourth playthrough in the system, and uh, I'm fine with it I, because I understand how the system works now. I'm used to it. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm okay with it. It's just I'm used to it. See, Mil, the three-hour zombie traps are only... They're not like that in, um, in Lethal Zone. It's only an hour and a half. So what I could do is I could drive down the road. Hopefully not waking up any screamers. Um... Park like here and walk over and get the mat materials out of here. Worst case scenario, I wake up another heart, but at least it's in an area that the heart's already awake. Party, um, so the hardy trait gives your person, I believe, damage resistance, a little bit of extra health and damage resistance. If I take out the nearest play card, this should clear up. Um, but even the whole, like, screamer screaming thing, um, at first I liked the idea. It was like, oh, yeah, you know, this is cool. But there are so many situations that happen. Um, and uh, what's his name? Arvid. Arvid put out a really, really good video showcasing, um, like what with all the things that are wrong and he, you know he, he did it like I, I like Arvid's videos because he's not extremely negative to, you know he's very very uh informational you know what I mean he focuses on the information and that that's that, that's what I like to see um and he just straight up showed what happened like you could have a screamer on the outside of plague territory and it screams and still wakes up a heart inside the territory if the scream waves overlap that very edge of the territory. It will still wake up a play card. Um, if you have a screamer that's outside, because as you guys know, when screamers scream, it's kind of like a daisy chain effect. It'll scream, it'll set off another screamer, that one will scream, and then if it daisy chains into plague territory... It wakes up the play card. So there's a lot of the screamer stuff that players just don't. And sometimes screamers just freaking scream chat. Like I've, I've had it where I'll be. And then like a, something will happen and a screamer just is screaming for whatever reason. Um, and that's, that's out of player control. So anything at first I was like, oh man, this is really cool. But I think it might be a little excessive. You know, one scream. One screamer scream and as long as this is plague territory, this place ain't never gonna feel safe. So maybe I don't know to balance it. Maybe uh, it, have the screamers count towards um like kills. Like right now, um, like the way Arvid explained it, uh, there's like a bar that might every time you kill a zombie, it minuses an amount of time off of it. And I feel like they could do the same thing, you know, instead of a screamer scream being an automatic play card that wakes up, it just 
counts towards the the heart waking up, kind of like the zombie kills do. And if you have too many screamers scream, then the plague heart wakes up. You know what I mean? And I feel like that'd be a little better. No, the new ma the new update doesn't even have a map in it. No, it's it's a it's a system rework to sieges and infestations. Not even a sound bar. It, just, whatever whatever they have tallying up the zombie kills, Paul. Whatever they have tally tallying up the 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 you know, you kill fifty zombies, um, and it's going toward you know, and in the heart wakes. Whatever tallies towards that, let the screamer screams count towards the same thing. And not just be an automatic uh, wake up. So, you know, if the tally, you know, if five screamers scream, then boom, a play cart would wake up. Uh, do you want to see it like another mechanic? No, nah, I feel like that'd be a little too... It, that'd be too much, I feel like, if they if they try to intertwine it into, uh, you know, because State of K already has so many systems and so many, like, things that players don't understand, things I don't understand, you know. Um, and I, I feel like the last thing they need to do is complicate it. Um, now, if there was a way for them to visualize it so I could see, okay, you know, this play card is almost ready to wake up. I don't know if there was, like, a, like, if they had, like, a little UI bar that showed the meter on how close a heart was to waking up. That way a player could say, oh, wait, okay, so this play card's really close to waking up. Let me bail um, or me, let me be careful. And then if over time the heart, if, if the meter goes back down, which it does for, from what Arvid said, it sounds like the, the meter does eventually go back down. I feel like that would be better. If it was something that players could visually see, okay, yeah, this play card's at like 70%. It's almost about to wake up. Let me bail out of here and, you know, stay away for a while. And then you could sit there and watch the bar go down and down and down. Once the bar's all the way back down, then you can go back in. Um, I feel like that would be, yeah, kind of like or like the circles. Yeah, something that just visualizes how close said heart was to waking up. And I think that's it for mor uh, morale, uh, materials in this area. Am I loving the AC Odyssey DLC? Hell yeah, that shit is awesome. Yeah, the Fate of the Atlantis DLC, it's, it's pretty damn dope. An infestation horde right there. See, so that didn't wake up that art, which is good, because that would have sucked. Did I say what my favorite zombie game was? My favorite zombie game would have to probably be State of Decay. And then The Last of Us. Oh, my, my uh, crafting only series. That was a rough one. That was a rough series. Uh, the lethal zone one I actually couldn't beat. Uh, my, my base was too weak to help defend uh, sieges and stuff. With this update, it might be a little easier to pull off a crafting only playthrough. Uh, it'd still be quite rough, though. Game's pretty decent for multiplayer, yeah, Fumby. You can play with your friends. Um, 
could be a little laggy at times because it's all depending on your internet as a host. But um, there's no like servers for the game. But um, it's still a good time. I know plenty of people that have a really good time. So this one is going to an unknown site. But I don't think it's going to make it through my outpost traps. If I'm being honest, chap. Now I want to look into getting another survivor. Ooh, is that going to infest up top here? I don't know if it's going to infest up here. It says it's heading to an unknown site. But I've revealed all these, so. Okay, I think it's going to the road. Kind of trying to watch and see. Yeah, so it's going to go to the road, and I think it's going to travel down and get zapped. So, yeah, we're good. We're good to go. Now, there is another area up here where I can come and get some more materials. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, we are running a low on fuel, though. But yeah, if you guys are uh, wondering or excited, Undead Labs is doing a stream on January 23rd. Um, they're going to be discussing the feedback that they've received from this beta. Um, so if you guys are putting in, you know, if you guys want to go ahead and put out your surveys or whatever, give your input on the, uh, make sure you do it before then, because right now they're taking feedback and then... Um, they're taking feedback now, and then on the 23rd, they're going to do a stream, discuss what the feedback they received, and what they plan on doing about it. So that's going to be a very good stream for those of you guys who are interested in what direction they're going to be going. Because so far, they've been radio silent on you know what they've heard back. Um, but yeah, that's the stream that I'm going to be looking forward to seeing. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about this update, that's going to be the good one. Move to uh, Wally. I, I I mean I pl I usually always move the Wallies, um, so I might. But I mean I can't move there now. I, I don't even have enough survivors, and we just started. I'm not, I'm not gonna go there and wipe out four play cards. Uh, but I always move the Wallies, so that's why I was kind of thinking about maybe moving somewhere else, because I always move the Wallies. You know, I think I've I've only lived in the drive-in once. Um, I've lived here once. I've never moved to uh, this base. I've never lived here before, chat. Mike's Concrete. Like, that could be a pretty decent... I've never lived there ever in my life. Uh, and I've lived in this base one time. The wheelhouse truck stop. And I've only... You know, I've actually only lived in the Barricade Strip Mall once... Only one time I've ever even lived in that base, too. Okay, so this horde should be getting zapped here soon. And boom.
Mics is a good base. I might move the mics then, chat. Because I've never lived there before. I mean, it's pretty central too, right? Yeah, it's pretty central. the air tastes so bad hey, generally there's always play cards up here so you gotta be careful now if i wake one up up here it wouldn't be the end of the world uh mainly because i already got the northern part covered okay, so two of the material spots are looted I have these two to check. And that's another thing is I think that stealth kills shouldn't count towards uh, waking up hearts. Uh, Elfo, I'm doing good. If I play driver? Um... I don't know. We're talking like that old school, like that old game driver? I don't... No room for that. If it's old, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, if we, you know, when, if and when we hit 100,000 subscribers, um, I'll probably do something big, you know, 100K stream or, you know, because I did one for 50K. It was a lot of fun. It was like a 12-hour straight stream. Kind of just went around and played a bunch of random games. I had fun. Okay, so I'm hoping that this play cart building also has two bags in it and we'll be in good shape. Two, two zombies. Thoughts on Jedi Survivor? I'm so excited. I seen somebody uh, in the chat ask earlier um, if I've ever played Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order was actually the game that got me back into Star Wars and watching all the m movies and shows and shit again. I'm absolutely in love with it. I'm so excited um, for the new game. Uh, it's crazy. So I really enjoyed Fallen Order. Uh, but Redshift and uh, Deliusville, thank you so much for the sub. Awesome. And uh, TJ, sir, thank you for the sub. Okay, then. And there it is, chat. Thank you for over 800 likes. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Casper, man, I don't... Like... The thing is, is even if you're not a fan of Star Wars... Uh, Jedi Fallen Order was just a good game. Period. Like... It's just all around a good game. The combat is so fun, the progression, the, the skills, the ability, it's, it's just so good. You don't even gotta like Star Wars to like that game.
Reach out. All you need is a couple stealth characters, and you can you can do stuff in plague territory. Do I ever fast search? Not really. Never worth it. Okay, so this zombie's gonna definitely latch on when I go to get out of here, but got four bags of materials. We are free. Make sure that Screamer doesn't lock on to us. Yeah, exactly, Travis, because the if you guys don't know, Jedi Fallen Order, the Star Wars game, is a it's, it is a Souls-like game. So what I mean by Souls-like is it's it's based off of the same formula as Dark Souls, where you have like the respawn points with the enemies. It's it's literally a Dark Souls game, but Star Wars, um, and it, it did. It, it was a Souls-like game with an amazing story. An amazing story. Oh, it was so good. Uh, the cinematics were so good. The character progression and the, it, it was. It was really, really dope. Yeah, um, that was honestly one of my favorite games we played this year. It was, it was so good. Or last year. So we went ahead and got a ton of material right there. Uh, 25. I could upgrade this workshop, which we'll do if I had another person. We got 33 seconds, chat. I've never played Kotor. Eldridge, how you doing? Uh, you hate the third-party uh, programs you have to install for those games? Uh, what uh, are you talking about? The Souls games? Because I played, I played the Souls games. I never used anything. <laughs> it was rough, and we had a good time. But yeah, I never used anything. Now, granted, you know, I, I did have chat to kind of point me in the right direction if I got super, super turned around. Um, so I could see as a as a player, you it, it could get really, really frustrating um, playing Dark Souls. Because sometimes you do, you're like, where the hell do I go? And you have to go. You got to YouTube it. You got to Google it. You got to look up a guide. Because when you get stuck in those games, you get like stuck, stuck chat, like hard stuck. Okay, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to end here, chat, because I want to go eat, and then we're going to be starting another stream. I started a, a bit later than I uh, today because my mom was over and stuff, so we're going to end here. Uh, as you guys can see, we have two hearts awake on the northern part here. Next episode, we're going to focus on getting a fourth survivor, whoever that may be, and uh, potentially whittling away at this and getting in here and getting some more loot because right now our loot numbers are pretty good we are low on fuel like really really low on fuel and the problem with that is i'm gonna run out of um i'm gonna run out of resources to keep my traps up and running so we do gotta we gotta find a stash of fuel somewhere uh, it'd probably be nice if, here. if i can get like four four fuel rucks but i don't even can't begin to know where i'd help get that from Trying to think. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to head down south here. There's a gas station. I think there's another fuel site like over here, over near Mike's. And I'm also gonna scout down here just to see how many hearts are in this area because we are gonna be eventually be moving to Mike's. I need six survivors though. So that's what we're gonna start working on next episode, chat. Building up our survivors, um, keeping these play cards under control, building up, make sure we have enough resources to keep ourselves protected from the infestations. And, uh, and go from there. And go from there. So, again, thank you, everybody, for over 800 likes on the stream. That That's absolutely massive. I really appreciate the support. Um, and 
all the new subscribers, uh, 34 channel members. You guys are amazing. Um, thank you guys. It, it really means a lot. If you guys have it on your way out, make sure you guys smash that like button. It's the best way to let me know that you guys want to see more of this. And uh, yeah, well, I'll be doing another stream here in a little bit, probably within an hour or so. And hopefully I'll see a bunch of you guys over there. But if not, have a great rest of your night. And if I do see you over in the next stream, can't wait. We're going to be playing some more Assassin's Creed. So you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.